scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. This is part of the meeting. It's an atmosphere for you. of saying thank you to the one who has made us all that we are. We sincerely acknowledge you. You are faithful. Above and beyond our limitations and weaknesses, you are faithful. You have chosen us and you have put your name upon our lives and destinies. You see the wonder, the wonder you have made out of our lives. We are deeply grateful. We are deeply grateful. We are deeply grateful. We are deeply grateful. Deeply grateful. Deeply grateful. Deeply grateful. Sabako takashi. Zikoto sukoto kabarati. Take your place, take your place, take your place, call his name, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, you are the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Bacana para 
Just hold hands with someone and begin to pray in the spirit. Just hold hands with someone and begin to pray in the spirit. Hold hands with someone and begin to pray in the spirit. Just make contact. like a bride waiting for her groom even so come even so come even so come kapara kota shapran digera tusa shaka te prateka te bereka te pras kata bara da bara da ba ena na ma na ma so ta na na ba ena ba jera ma na mo so na na ba ena na na ba ena jera na na ma so na na Ena maso na na ba na na ba ni na na ba na mo. Ena na 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 ba na na mo so ka ni na na ba na mo. Ena na na mo so na 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 ba ka ni na na ba na mo. Shaka para na ba na na ba na na ba na 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 mo. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. There is something that will lead heaven to this place. Keep praying. 
Jabara Katur so brandy gera push break it here. Keep praying, keep praying. Rakata Hallelujah. We are going to pray one more time. If you are sick in your body, just lay your hands there. There is a strong healing anointing in this place right now. You are sick anywhere in your body. Lay your hands. Lay your hands. I see the power of God about to touch people in a few minutes. Miracles of healing. The Lord is healing migraine headache right now. There are people suffering from intense migraine headache. The power of God is touching you right now. Right now. Right now, right now, I'm seeing, um, I'm seeing a lady having severe, like, like menstrual cramps, severe menstrual cramps. Right now, as I speak, the power of God is touching, 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 touching. That pain leaves right now. That pain leaves right now. There is a spirit that has been walking with a lady. You literally feel as if there is a man walking by your side. That spirit is leaving you right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. That spirit is leaving you right now. This is Zion, the city of the Lord. There's someone, your voice, for a while, your voice has been unable to be clear. 
it's like there's something hooking you you're going to feel like fire on your throat right now right now and your voice will come back to normal right now right now hotness of the body that's what the lord is telling me father we give you all the glory hotness of the body hotness of the body is living right now there is someone you brought your mother your mother is in this place she's been unable to sleep for a long time she can't even sleep but right now the power of god is coming upon her and that devil is giving way right now 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 there's someone you have a boil like a boil in your nose right inside your nose the power of god is touching it not only will it be healed it will disappear right away you will touch it and you will not feel anything right now the lord is touching the lord is touching the lord is touching i'm seeing a river in the realm of the spirit that's what i'm seeing flowing into this place a river is a river of miracles many will be swept by that river is a river that flows from the love and the throne of god it's a river bringing healing bringing healing bringing healing there are there are miracles going on healing miracles hallelujah hallelujah there's a spectacular miracle that the lord wants to do for many people hallelujah i'm seeing a group of people in the realm of the spirit you used to hear god in profound dimensions but from the beginning of this year something happened to your hearing and it's an attack from the gate of hell now please pay attention i'm speaking by the spirit it's an attack from darkness upon your hearing and it's like something has closed you some of you don't even know you are part of it i'm about to pray for you because that that prophetic dimension you need it to hear what i want to teach you tonight you need it there are some dimensions of spiritual communication that you cannot understand it scientifically and the lord is asking me to pray therefore father i stretch my hands on your people every gate of the prophetic that has been closed every gate every gate the hearing ear let that grace be released right now the hearing ear the hearing ear Sata many of you will hear the sound of angels instantly instantly inside outside those following on our social media platform the lord is opening the lord is opening prophetic dimensions the sharing of the spirit authentic sharing not nonsense an authentic hearing shakataba sheketekata rakata pakotosia for some of you it is restoration 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 and what happened to your hearing that you no longer hear the sounds of the spirit like fire is coming on the ear of people fire fire fire, I fire falling on people fire a restoration of hearing a restoration of hearing a restoration of hearing lift your hands there are people here your dreams used to be prophetic but it was and my God said, something is happening to your spirit man the hand of God is coming upon your spirit man the hand of God coming upon your spirit man right now dreams 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 shaka patata stretch dreams where you will understand the counsel of God in the visions of the night the counsel of God in the visions of the night the counsel of God in the visions of the night hallelujah hallelujah the last thing i'll pray for before we sit down is sensitivity listen let me tell you if you lack sensitivity in this season and in this time 
you will never be able to be in sync with what God is saying sensitivity is like breathing in the realm of the spirit to be able to understand the impulses of the spirit and align yourself with what the spirit is doing and saying he said the sons of Issachar they had an understanding of the time and they knew what Israel ought to do I want to pray for you there is a grace that makes men sensitive many of us used to be sensitive especially our sisters something has happened to your sensitivity but in the name of Jesus Christ I pray this is a mountain of the Lord's house where grace is sufficient grace is sufficient right now I stretch my hands may that grace begin to fall on men and women let it fall let it fall sensitivity discernment sensitivity discernment sensitivity discernment to the speakings of the spirit sensitivity discernment to the speakings of the spirit Mighty on your throne, mighty on your throne, you were mighty on your throne, hey, mighty on your throne, you were mighty in this place, mighty on your throne, you were mighty on your throne, mighty on your throne, you were mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne, you are mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. Mighty in my life. Mighty in my life. Mighty in my life. You are mighty in my life. Mighty in my life. You are mighty in my life. Mighty in my life. Mighty in my life. Mighty in my life. Father, we pray that you go ahead and do everything you intend for us to experience tonight. Right beyond our dimensions, right beyond our perceptions, right beyond our yieldedness. I know God, I pray that you activate strange things in the lives of people. Strange things in the lives of people. Please sit down carefully if you can. Tonight will be a night of strange impartations. If you can't just sit down and let your heart be open, let your spirit be sensitive, no carelessness, no distraction. Please, Koinonia is a place of impartation. You need impartation to rise and step into your prophetic destiny. There are times that certain things need to be activated. Nothing can cover for noise and stories. You must come into the reality of certain experiences and impartation is one of the platforms that can bring you into those realities. Once again, I welcome everyone. This is Koinonia. And there is a reason why God is doing it. There is a reason why God is bringing us to this dimension of impartations. It's not just for nothing. Listen, in the course of my teaching, I'll be very brief, but in the course of my teachings, there will be different kinds of anointings just coming in. You get this in Koinonia. Koinonia is a place where things are activated. And so when your word comes, it will come upon you. Yours is just to be sensitive. As I teach, there will be dispensing of graces. Dispensing of graces. Be sensitive. Don't just hear what I'm saying. A time will come. Yours will come upon you. So it's going to be a noisy meeting. Don't worry. You will hear what I'm saying. But as I teach, people will receive things. Will receive things. Inside, outside, everywhere. You will receive things. Shop. 
Pratusa Kuratusa Prita Shidaha. Then Broto Subrakatabaria. Listen. The church must pay the price for a genuine anointing that will really be able to bring God to the sea. The church must pay the price for a genuine, authentic anointing that will be able to bring true results for people. The only way we can become a revelation of the Christ, I'm telling you this, is to contend for a dimension in the spirit that affords us the privilege of hosting superior dimensions of the presence and the power of God. Talk is cheap. It's easy to make a lot of noise in the body of Christ. It's easy to stand upon many doctrinal and theological dissertations communicating the things that we believe should be. But in the final analysis, people need to experience the reality of the kingdom. And I think this is where a lot of we pastors have not done justice for people. A lot of us are speaking prophets. A lot of us are mighty pastors and apostles and prophets and bishops. We can communicate spiritual reality. But the challenge is when it comes to the practical demonstration of the essence of our communication. We try to create all kinds of theological excuses. So there are so many things we teach that God is. There are so many things we teach that God can do. There are so many realities we, we whet the appetite of God's people by opening them up to the possibilities that can be in the spirit. But it is so frustrating when people's appetites are to the apex, yet we sustain the power and the life to experientially draw them into those experiences. So we teach on healing. We teach on different kinds of healing different dimensions of healing and then in the final analysis the sick person still goes back sick the cancer patient still goes back with, with their cancers we are happy about dispensing theologically arranged communications but the bible says listen the bible tells us that the gospel listen it's not just about the excellency of speech right but the demonstration of power to the end that the faith of people will not be founded upon the wisdom of men but upon the power of god no matter what you say about god if you cannot bring him to the scene for me to relate with his might you have wasted my time i may applaud you for your intelligence and your ability to be flawless in your research but let me tell you something in the final analysis people need to be transformed demons are not a theory they are real sicknesses are not a theory they are real oppression is not a theory it is real poverty is not a theory it is real only preaching largely are theories blessed is he who comes in the name of our God? Blessed is He who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is He who comes in the name of our God. Hallelujah. The Lord showed me a vision a few days ago. And in that vision, I saw so many people in the church weary and tired that's what i saw in the vision including pastors i saw people seated and stranded no message because everything to be preached have been preached i saw members frustrated and humiliated and the lord began to reveal to me that it is a strategy please pay attention it's a prophetic teaching tonight it's a strategy by the kingdom of darkness because when you study when you listen to my teaching why revivals fail i shared with you there 
a strategy with which satan uses to defeat many believers satan will never strike you at your point of strength he knows that all men are human although we are divine there is a human component to us so the moment you are doing the work of the kingdom advancing the purposes of the kingdom fervent in prayer strong in the world the devil will not attack you he knows that there is one thing that is common to all men is called exhaustion the reality of our humanity that no matter how powerful you are no matter how anointed you are a time must come when the reality of your humanity will meet up with you it is at that point that men are separated from the boys it is at that point that only those who sustain a system in the spirit to continue will stand i saw that vision i saw faces i recognized and i could not believe that such great men could be weary now you see a man of god can be weary and you will not know because don't mistake in the grace upon a man to dispense truth and his personal growth and progress there are two different things i can be as dry and weary as whatever but when i stand upon this pulpit the anointing that comes with my office will make me act so flawless you will not know that i'm at the verge of giving up are we together most times we mistaking the grace and the unction that accompanies the office of a man to mean that because that grace looks ever fresh ever flowing in power that it necessarily means the person is highly motivated and happy no there are times i've been so tired physically tired going for meetings and i i can sometimes it looks like i can't stand for 15 minutes but the moment i hold that mic i no longer become joshua selman an apostolic anointing comes and i can stand for hours now you may mistake in my strength to mean that i am not weak do you know sometimes when i get back home even to eat becomes a problem are we together so i saw weariness in that vision i saw many people gassing out in prayer literally like a meter just diminishing i saw people gassing out in their world level and one of the areas that i saw people crying is the area of not getting results financially and otherwise it was frustrating people i saw quarrels between people fathers mothers different people i saw pastors fighting themselves and i was wondering what is the meaning of all this nonsense and the lord told me this is what the devil wants to bring he's taking advantage of the economic tide that is sweeping the nations as a tool and he wants to wreak havoc in the lives of people are we together part of the advantages of a true apostolic ministry is to have an eye that sees and the ability to perceive the impulses of the spirit part time and communicate to people the realities that are the emphasis of god for that moment that's why we pray for perception because there are many of us if your perception were alive you would have picked the signal let me tell you something it's important to gauge your spiritual growth don't let men clap you into spiritual mediocrity what are you an MOG for when you cannot perceive the impulses of the spirit what are you a campus fellowship president for or a pastor or an apostle when the things of the spirit happen discussions are going on in the realm of the spirit and your presence cannot be registered because you have not sustained an ability to rise beyond your flesh and understand the speakings of the spirit hallelujah ministry is not all about preaching but the ability to perceive the impulses of people when god makes you a leader he commits unto you the destinies of people it's your responsibility now to be in sync with the spirit Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 says I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower it says and I will see what the Lord will say not hear what he will say see perceive conceive what he's saying when I saw this my heart really broke especially when I saw faces I could recognize 
I saw that people had gas out. Truly. Mothers who used to have a very strong prayer altar. I saw the thing going down. Usually it starts through carelessness. Here and there. Even if you don't pray one week, it doesn't matter. There's grace for me, I'll come again. And then before you know it, completely void of power. And you know the interesting thing? No matter how bad you are, the devil will never strike you. He's smart. If he strikes you, you will go for a retreat very fast. And you will come back. So he will allow you to keep moving. There is a threshold level. It's like a gauge in the spirit. You keep going down, he will not strike keep going down one day he will aim at you and if not for the mercy of god and the prophetic he will hit you bad blessed is he who comes in the name of our god blessed is he who comes in the name of our god blessed is he who comes in the name of the Father? Hallelujah. I will share with you three keys the Lord revealed to me. That if not managed, will strengthen the power of darkness to cause the havoc that it plans to cause. Take note of this month, July. You see, this month, July, there is, there is intense warfare going on in the realm of the spirit. Those who are sensitive, no. Those who are not sensitive, just assume and move carelessly and foolishly until they become victims. This month, mark this month, July, you see, is a month of intense spiritual building. You need to build capacity for the months to come. Victory is assured, but the strength of many will be tested in the months to come. You will see this happen. The strength of men of God, the strength of people, their, their spiritual capacity will be tested. And only those who have built fortification in the spirit, the Bible says for us to redeem the time, take advantage of the time. Are we together? So the devil is attacking the prayer lives of people. Dramatically. You see, he's not attacking it by stopping you from praying i will show you the things the first thing that the devil is using to sabotage the prophetic advancement of believers and the church listen is exhaustion the reality of the weariness of our bodies the reality of that weariness exhaustion psychological exhaustion physical exhaustion Are we together? So when people gas out, they come to a point where it no longer makes sense to wait upon the Lord and trust the Lord. Because many hopes have been disappointed. Many dreams seemingly look like they are shattered. People look at their experience versus their prophecy and it does not match. And so many are fainting, including the great ones who should stand to strengthen many people. And there's nothing to be embarrassed there. That's why God is opening us up to it. So that we will rise. Is God blessing us? Exhaustion. Weariness. That fatigue. That spiritual fatigue. Where you want to study your Bible and you just look at it and it looks like a burden. You want to open your Bible and study. It looks like a burden. You buy books but you don't read them. You buy DVDs but you can't watch them. There seems to be a spirit that takes advantage of our humanity and our weariness. So, you are buying books. You are buying tapes. You are downloading messages. Those around will think you are taking advantage of them. But you know that it's been a long time since you made contact with these resources. Not because you are not of God. It's called weariness, exhaustion. Even the young men shall faint and the youth will utterly fall says that's the first thing that i saw that the devil is taking advantage of to destroy people just destroy people just destroy people 
the second thing that the Lord revealed to me is financial limitation write it down I saw a lot of people whose focus had been distracted and the reason was because there were no resources I saw okay, churches groups people even people who used to participate actively in the house of God prayer meetings prayer groups the reality of the stress and strain that lack of finances brings a lot of people started asking themselves questions look we're, we're humans let's go and, and and solve our family needs first and it's a plot it's a plot by darkness are we together where believers go to pray and they can't pray because of financial weariness and even if they pray the entire circumference of their prayer is lamentation and a plea for open heavens you may not realize it but it's a strategy it's a strategy listen let me tell you something satan weighs the governments of nations like a treasure on a balance and manipulates them according to his desire this thing called mammon is satan's weapon of mass destruction mammon mammon that spirit the only spirit that jesus taught that you can worship either him or that spirit he never said satan he said you cannot serve two masters so in any way your servanthood must be registered either to god or to mammon hallelujah in that vision i saw people losing jobs companies downsizing people there are not many times you hear me speak prophetically like this but you write it and see i saw it happening to people are we together several people confused even do you know that pastors and churches went down financially because their members didn't have the means you know offerings and tithes and all of that and it was a weariness to people and subtly the teachings about spiritual growth the teachings about empowerment intimacy encounter began to diminish because the pastors were forced to have to continue talking about finances it became as though it was the only key that will have to keep the people coming to the churches are we together when i saw this thing my heart dropped and i said my god what is this you have to do something about this nonsense because the devil wants to take advantage of the economic tide that is sweeping africa and that spirit that is sweeping nigeria that bitterness that offense many people no longer pay attention to god you meet somebody and talk to him about spiritual growth and the person will even tell you to go away why because we have said it unapologetically in this ministry that when your finances is not secured it will affect your spiritual life there's no confusion about it I hope you believe what I'm sharing with you. Oh, please, you better do. Please, you better do. Because it will happen. The third thing I saw was, it's like flies. You know how house flies? Like a swarm of flies. Now, there are times I've seen these things prophetically and I've shared them here over. But I saw a swarm of flies just coming across regions. Ah, and I looked at it and the Lord took my mind back to the plague one of the plague that happened in the days of moses when those the swamp of flies came around and began to consume people and i had in my spirit the ministry of the devourer manifesting as sicknesses manifesting as tragic events and ultimately death i saw this thing rampant manifestation of mysterious sicknesses that cannot be diagnosed in hospitals they will check you with machines and say nothing is, is happening blessed is he who comes in the name of our God 
Blessed are you, for you come in the name of our God. I'm not a prophet of doom. But I saw the tears in Nigeria in the month of September. It was almost unbearable. I'm not, just listen to me, I've not finished preaching. I'm not a prophet of doom. But I saw it was bad. Economically and otherwise. It was, it was like this country was completely clueless and at a point of a mess. I saw people being, um, what do they call it? Laid off from work. Completely laid off. Husbands, wives laid off. Their services were no longer needed in different sectors, including government sectors. They downsized people because they needed to accommodate what was happening. Are we together? I saw an increase in crime rate, theft, stealing, including stealing people, not just stealing things, stealing people. Why is God revealing this to scare you? No. God is revealing this to strengthen you. He will never bring a prophecy without a strategy. Just keep following. There is always an exemption for the church. But the problem most times is we don't pay attention. There are people who hear what I'm saying now. I'm, I'm sorry, especially for elderly people. They just shut down and say all these idiots talking again. And then until it happens. And then we become victims. Of situations and circumstances. You see, let me tell you something. Prophecy, prophecy in its purest form was designed not just to give people, to make people privy to something that will happen. The most important part of prophecy is the strategy for exemption. Not what will happen. The strategy for exemption. Any true prophet that brings a word from the Lord especially if it's a word that is on the negative side if it came from god god must be able to speak to his people and say this is a strategy you can choose it especially for certain things that are written judgments you cannot pray them away but there is a system like the flood of noah there was a system that was built called the ark like the passing of the angel of death upon egypt the mystery of the blood of the lamb and the Passover, right? It was the mystery of exemption. But you see, the church, we, we have this ugly mentality which came from a misguided understanding of what the New Testament teaches. I can relate with God. I don't need to hear anybody. Leave me alone. If it's so, God will speak to me. If God has not spoken to me, I will not listen. Let me tell you something. Listen, I was teaching the school of ministry students. Our spiritual growth is based on our personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. But the advancement of the kingdom is based on covenants. You have to understand this. Your spiritual growth and my spiritual growth is based on my personal encounter. My knowledge of who God is, his ways, and that's how I grow. In the Old Testament, it used to be through prophets and mediums. But now the Bible tells us that Jesus has come as a mediator. He's opened a new and living way to all of us. We can now access God directly in terms of spiritual growth. But the advancement of God's kingdom is not general. God finds men and enters a covenant with those men to represent his dealings in a particular dimension. And every time God wants to deal with a territory in that dimension, it must come through those channels. They are called spiritual tribes. They represent the communication of God's purposes in a dimension. So when you talk about faith, every time God wants to bring his speakings as regards the word of faith, there are spiritual channels he has entered a personal covenant with and aligned them to be able to communicate his purposes in that respect. Bishop Oyedeko, Kenneth Copeland. You can trace that spiritual tribe and they represent his communications in that regard. Are we together? There are other dimensions 
when the spirit of revival wants to fall upon the nation there are people who represent the spiritual tribe that communicates that reality to the world it's not general so your tapping into that possibility only becomes on the strength of your alignment with what God is doing. When God wants to come in in the area of finances and prosperity, I know that everyone will be blessed. But there are people who have a personal covenant with God that represent his speakings in that regard. You will never ignore their ministry and hear the current dealings of the spirit as far as that is concerned. So the advancement of the kingdom is not based on personal relationship it's based on covenant god calls a man called abraham the first man in the bible who showed us that men can walk by faith with god are we together he is god's type of faith the only reason why we can tap into the possibilities of god as far as the blessing is concerned is on the strength of the covenant that god entered with one man called abraham are we together when god wanted to salvage a nation he used one man called moses entered a personal covenant with moses that afforded moses an unusual access to god beyond his personal spiritual growth because moses himself did not make the cut to the promised land how be it based on that covenant to an extent that although moses may have failed spiritually in the book of jude an angel came to carry his body and Satan still wanted the dead body because they represent systems. They are not just human beings. They are systems. Elijah was a man who represented God's system. God's covenant of reformation. God's covenant of, of um, forerunning revivals. He's called Elijah the Tishbite. Are we together? So, by the time you allow people to begin to corrupt your mind and say, don't make it look like only some people can hear God. No, the idea is not a show of superiority. The idea is an election by grace where men have become like trees. They are like spiritual vines and your connection to them is how you are able to tap into certain possibilities. I've shared it with us here. Abraham gave birth to ishmael with hagar is that true hagar was crying ishmael was crying but the bible says god had the voice of the young lad not the voice of hagar why because when god looked at ishmael he saw abraham and received and saw the covenant god more often times to say he blessed solomon for the sake of his father david Are we together? When the kingdom was about to be advanced after Christ came, he got 12 men, entered a personal covenant with them. Listen, let me tell you, there is a difference between those apostles and us. We are equal in Christ, but they were men who entered a certain kind of covenant with God that represented the advancement of God's kingdom. If Satan killed all those 12 apostles, the kingdom could not be advanced. Because it was through them that it would be spread. That's why God protected them. Angels had to come and open prisons to force them to go out. Are we together? One man called John, the beloved, had a personal understanding. It was his personal covenant with God that granted him access to show us the revelation, the apocalypse, the unfolding of prophecy. There are still men like that on the earth. There are not many, but there are. In fact, the system of God's electing these men is always in twelves. There's no time to teach you on that. That God's apostolic governing system is always in twelves. So in, in regions, you will always find this number, twelve. The apostolic spiritual governing council of God. They may not even know themselves. But they represent God's order of activities. Are we together? But you see, when the devil wants to deceive you, he will bring pride. 
and make you look like I can access the throne of God by myself. I, am, I don't need to hear anything. Even when God is giving a word of caution, most times we don't listen and we say, no, 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 no. I'm, nobody should do this and that and that. And then, you know, um, I don't even want to go into that, that teaching because it will take our whole time. As you know, I love the body of Christ. I am the last person who will fight the body of Christ. I love the body of Christ and I love the different dimensions of spiritual operation. But then I am always quick to attack imbalances. Especially when they get to a level where they can corrupt the authenticity of the work of believers. The moment an imbalance gets so bad that it can bring you out of spiritual alignment, it calls for concern. Are we together? And one of it is, of course, as we know, the concept of grace. Are we together now? Now, when you understand the concept of grace and you isolate it with respect to other things that God is doing, it becomes an error. Grace as a doctrine on its own is an error. It only makes sense when you add it together and you piece it together with every other thing God is doing. When you study the book of Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, theologically speaking, contains the highest church truth. Are we together? Where Apostle Paul was teaching the church, he was giving them certain doctrines, the entire scope of a Christian experience. Six chapters, which were a communication of the entire activities of the believer. So it starts, theologically speaking, with what we call sitting, right? You've, heard, you've read that and many of you have heard it in different messages. It was that revelation came by a man called Watchman Nee. Watchman Nee was the, the, the apostle that God used to communicate the realities of redemption in a very balanced and authentic way to the body of Christ. And so that position of sitting, the Bible starts in the book of Ephesians teaching us how, in fact, when it starts in chapter 1, it never talks about us, it talks about Christ. And all that he has done. When you start reading chapter 2, it now brings us into the scene. Right? We are now raised up with Christ. So the revelation of God's grace is seen in chapter 1 and 2. And it is true that the foundation of a believer's life is predicated upon the grace of God. There are certain things that we can never have ourselves. Like righteousness. It is impossible for anybody to have righteousness by himself. The Bible says the best of our righteousness is as filthy rags. And do not confuse righteousness and uprightness. They are not the same. Righteousness and uprightness are not the same. Righteousness is a gift from God. Uprightness is our response, the advantage, our, our work of faith. I'm just giving us, are you getting blessed? I just want to establish a few things before we continue it's very very important so the bible starts teaching us on the grace of god and all the possibilities that come with that grace all that christ had done for us in his death his burial his resurrection and his ascension into heaven in fact it was on the strength of that that paul began to teach in chapter in verse 17 he said for this cause I have a passion for you understanding this. This is the foundation of your victory in Christ. And for this cause, I, Paul, bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may grant unto you, right? The spirit of revelation, you know, and understanding that your eyes being enlightened or flooded with light, that you may know certain things. One is the hope of your calling. And then, you know, the power that raised Christ that was exalted when Christ was raised from the dead, you know, and, and all of that. And Paul begins to speak. He knew that the church needs to know that. But Paul did not just walk there. He didn't stop there. He began to talk about what is called theologically our walk of faith. Right? Character. Now you taking advantage of the grace of God. I told you there are two dimensions to the grace of God. There is the grace of God as unmerited access and there is the grace of God as power to live like Christ. They are all called grace. Don't just confuse them. Grace does not just mean what God has done and we receive by faith. There is a dimension of grace that represents everything Christ has done that we could not do. And he gave it to us. We receive it by faith. But there is a dimension of grace that empowers us to do we will do, but it's not by our strength. 
Are we together? And then he wraps up the book of Ephesians with what is called the, the you know, uh, standing and then our, our, our walk and then, you know, sitting and standing. Then he talks of spiritual warfare. Our ability to contend against powers and principalities. And listen, every doctrine that must build a believer, please hear me. Every doctrine that must build a believer must sustain all these components. Whenever there is a deviation from this pattern, it will lead to error. If you try to teach people how to do warfare, how to do character, and you forget the grace of God, you will lead them into error and legalism. Are we together? When you try to bring, isolate the doctrine of holiness without giving men the foundation of faith, you will lead to self-righteousness, which does not hold any weight in the spirit. And so it must be in that order. The first thing believers must understand about God is not warfare, it's the grace of God. And that's encapsulated in what we call the gospel of salvation. A revelation of the substitutionary work of uh, uh, Jesus Christ, which is a reflection of the love of the Father. So when we see that grace, then our walking right now by faith is our own participation that's called the gospel of the kingdom. Our reward in gratitude and honor for that sacrifice for us. And then our standing, it says, having done all to stand, stand. Now, let me tell you something. The part of this truth you ignore is the path the devil will use to destroy your life. You can't choose sitting as it were grace you can't choose kingdom just like that and isolate it you can't choose deliverance just like that there's a series on it and you can get it after the service it's called the full gospel where all these doctrines were examined one by one their imperfections their imbalances to the end that the bride of christ will become perfect he said come and i will show you the lamb's wife he said and he showed me a city equal in length equal in breadth equal in height and part of the possibilities in the kingdom is the foundation of the apostles and the prophets christ himself being the chief cornerstone god stations these men so that they can communicate the speakings of the spirit and it is that same order of god's system that was mimicked by the antichrist system when you read the book of revelations from uh, uh, chapter 13 and the rest the bible tells us that satan empowered the beast the beast will now empower the false prophets the same order the same way god empowers his apostles and prophets to communicate certain things satan empowers the beast who empowers the false prophets and then they continue carrying out their agenda so there is a system spiritual growth is not haphazard you don't choose how you want it's not even just how your pastor said so there is an irrefutable pattern that has not changed it did not change just because um god jesus christ came and died for us no it's an eternal pattern it was carved out of who god is not what he's doing are we together There are people who believe in miracles, but they do not believe in the prophetic and the apostolic. That lapse is Satan's authorization in their life. There are people who do not believe in the gift of the spirit, but they are well-meaning people. That lapse is Satan's, you know, advantage in their life. There are people, for instance, who believe in grace, but they may not believe in holiness and righteousness and all of that, and Satan takes advantage of it. There are people who believe in deliverance but may not believe in the grace of God. And Satan takes advantage and they are forever fighting every and anything. The key is not exemption. The key is balance. Everybody say balance. Say it again, balance. The key is balance. Because all of these things are components of the same system. Hallelujah. And so I want you to believe the prophetic is real. It is still functional. It did not die with the New Testament. The prophetic is real. Now I know that here and there people may have exaggerated certain dimensions of it. But it's not enough reason for us to throw the baby and the bad water. Lives can be rescued 
when we understand what God is saying. And the Bible says, He that hears, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. So if he's talking to one person, he's talking to the ecclesia, the church. Hallelujah. Pray one minute and say, Lord, I hear what you are saying. I'm not rebellious. I hear what you are saying. You are speaking to the church. I am part of the church and I hear what you are saying. I hear what you are saying. I'm not a rebel. I hear what you are saying. I hear what you are saying. Go ahead and pray. strategies right now that God revealed to me and then we'll take some time and really pray. I want us to seriously pray tonight and God will grant us that grace. Are we together? If you fight economic empowerment get set to struggle spiritually. Promise made a statement when he came to receive the offering and he said having abundance of supplies will increase your prayer life and minimize your prayer points. How true you see, let me tell you something. This system that we live in, Cosmos, is a system that was designed intelligently. Are we together? God made the heavens and the earth, but the system, the social strata, and its civilization was nicely modeled and built by Lucifer, the custodian of the Antichrist system. And he built it such that our civilization will only thrive on economic empowerment. Please listen. Are we together now? And part of the imbalance that we're talking about is what has produced believers who are prayerful, loving, but we have not paid attention to our finances. And in this season, our flaw is becoming obvious. Are we together? Many anointed churches are seen right now that they cannot buy generator for their prayer meetings many churches that will have to depend on rent or something the man the landlord may be an unbeliever and he may get up under the influence of a strange spirit and say no more use of this venue it is locked and what happens the sheep is scattered it's a strategy by the pit of hell because the bible says the borrower is and will always be slave to the lender so our concept of empowerment must be seen not just as a desire to be rich and to be money mongers. Please get this. If that is your thinking, you are already in error. The concept of empowerment is to rise to a level where we overcome the influence of mammon. That spirit that is, is compelling the nations to worship her. There is a spirit. It's called mammon. If you have not seen that spirit, just look around our government and you will know that that spirit is being worshipped. The obsession for the worship of images and the worship of Lucifer did not start in our generation. Right? Remember when a king built 90 solid feet, go and said at the sound of music, everybody will bow down and worship. And your survival in that territory depended on your willingness to bow. Some gentlemen said, oh king, no. They found another system of exemption and they changed the tide. Businesses are bowing already. Churches are bowing already. Systems are coming to their knees. I've heard men of God who didn't used to talk about certain things and have been surprised hearing the way they are beginning to be so obsessed 
about financial principles that are not consistent with the ways of the Lord. And the reason is because for every leader, what faith is to the realm of the spirit, that's what finance is to this realm. You must pay the school fees of your child. Are we together? And that reality is beginning to punish a lot of people to the detriment of their spiritual life. But everybody said there is a way out. Shout, he said there is a way out. The way out of financial hardship in this season goes beyond investments, goes beyond business. Let me tell you what the Holy Ghost told me. You see, if you do investments, you need money to make money. Is that true? You need money to make money. If you do business, you are selling products, you are selling services and that's all right. But the problem is that the products you are selling have a fixed price and cannot be manipulated ordinarily. Are we together? Meaning there is a limit to what can come into your hand. There is a limit to patronage and all of that. But the key, I've said it again and again, is when you become the product yourself. Not just that you offer services, you become the service. When you become valuable, not just have things that are valuable, but you yourself as a person, you rise to a point where you become an epitome of value. You have entered your financial Sabbath, I guarantee you. The most expensive commodity for instance on earth is the anointing. And when you have the anointing, we used to jokingly say it sometimes with a Jimmy, how that we watch people who we know do not know one, maybe one twentieth of the business principles we should know. But because they possess the most expensive commodity on earth, which is the anointing, and its ability to provide supernatural solutions, they exempt themselves from the tide and the grip of mammon. So God's call for us in this season as believers to exempt us from the economic turmoil that is whipping the nations and that will inevitably come and lash a lot of people in Nigeria is not only to surround ourselves with valuable things. Valuable things are important, but be the value yourself. And we have that advantage because the Holy Ghost is here to help us. That's why I said your greatest business strategy in this season is to labor in the spirit and carry something authentic and supernatural you will enter the sabbath of your life do you believe what i'm saying please believe it i can sell palm oil is it not when you need palm oil that you buy it are we together i have palm oil in industrial scale but until there is a demand but you see let me tell you something the rev the world revolves around certain things that will never um, run out of demand one of it is the anointing one of it is the realities that come from the life of a man in partnership with the holy spirit such that even in your business you are offering much more than the product first and foremost you have risen to a point where you have become so valuable then any other valuable thing around you only becomes a support not the basis for your confidence do you understand what i'm saying as harsh as the economic climate is there are people moving as if it doesn't exist in nigeria please don't ever deceive yourself that everybody is crying let me tell you why we all look like we are crying because people have found out that if you don't cry with others the the anger and the pain they will fight you back so they just cry and say cry honestly god is, is faithful but the truth is not everybody is crying there are people who are far from crying they have found the key every one naira that seems to disappear did not go out of earth is somewhere is in the hands of those who have paid the price to become valuable i made up my mind that as god grants grace i will pay the price to be so valuable because by god's grace my life and this ministry should not come to a point where we are stranded and the purposes of the kingdom becomes jeopardized simply because of a, a god called mammon
Look at me. Do you know that there are many of our families we have tried to bring them maybe for the meetings and they may not want to listen. But how many of you know that if we buy something tomorrow and we say everybody should come and line up? Vim, Omo, sewing machine, bikes. You will see people who swore that they would never come here. You see them standing. Even if they will not use it, they will get it and go and sell it and quickly use the money. That's the reality of economic hardship. And from the vision the Lord showed me, listen, people will do things that you will not imagine. Do you know in the Bible, women ate their children? The Bible says, can a mother forget her child? This one, a mother remembered and still ate the child. That's what finances can do. You talk about prostitution is child's play. When poverty hits people, they will make calls that they, they had not made for years. You see, if you do not empower your people, don't blame them for perversion. And I found out that you do not judge spiritual seriousness just from the face. You can see someone praying, but knows that there are seven people whose daily bread are dependent upon them. They will go and sleep with any allergy anywhere and bring the money. They will even bring it and so project 10,000. Are we together? Say in the name of Jesus, I exempt myself from this economic hardship. Say it in the name of Jesus, I exempt myself from this economic hardship. The Bible says when men say there is a casting down for you, it says you will say there is a lifting up there is a lifting up there is a lifting up but if you don't believe this sooner or later you will have to face the bitter reality of this prophetic word because it will happen i want to be honest with you i'm not one person who just prophesies everything i see but i i, I salute the government of this nation i know that they are doing their best with what they know and whatever covenant they are part of but I, I want to tell you one truth here. I don't see transformation happening very soon. Let me tell you the truth. All that, I've, and, and I, I, I don't mean to insult anybody, but a lot of people have given so many prophecies, you are going to see boom, not 2016. It will happen for those who have the strategies. But as far as the world is speaking, you have not seen tears. Wait till July finishes. I've, I'm telling you what I've seen. You will see people sit down and cry like children. I'm not talking of illiterates. You will sit down and gather your degree and shed tears on it. But for those who are hearing this thing and will pay the price to become valuable, I tell you, you will rise as if the devil does not exist. It has nothing to do with age. It has nothing to do with level of education. Hear me. It has nothing to do with gender. It has everything to do with having perceptions and receiving God's strategy for now. Don't sit down and confuse yourself saying this and that. I'm an astute businessman. Just keep quiet and let the Lord speak to you. I'm not daft. I understand business. If you hear me speak to you like this, it is what the Lord is saying per season. Let me tell you, what will give you bread is what God is saying, not what you know what god is saying the direction of god is the direction of favor the direction of god is the direction of life it's god speaking to us you must challenge yourself to be valuable in this season the devil is a liar. Kai, the devil is a liar. There is a spirit in Asia called Quatsi Quata. That's what the Bible calls Mammon. It's a spirit. Many of you have seen it. It's the image of a flying serpent, a flying dragon. That is the exact picture of Mammon. It's a spirit that will compel the nations to bow to its leadership. I assure you, many people will bow. The concept of 666 is not just something you receive on your hand and receive on your forehead. It's already happening. When a system compels you, 
receiving the mark is not just having a physical inscription is coming under the sovereign rule of that system so that you have no options you have received the mark are we together but God is going to grant us grace we will come out in another dimension no 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 listen let me tell you I don't know about you but koinonia will not bow to this system there is a superior covenant we have the rod of a higher priesthood no devil no spirit no system will make us change our message to tone down the apostolic work god has given so that we can attract certain kinds of wealthy individual that's what is happening to pastors right now there are certain messages you cannot preach if it is not rich man friendly get set to sweep your church by yourself so you have to tone down certain things there are certain mainstream tv programs right now where you are not permitted to teach certain topics it used to be that you can't mention the name of jesus but now they've taken it to another level certain topics should not be taught on mainstream if you teach about pressure how to manage it how love how people can can come together a gospel of universalism marry anything anyhow anywhere doesn't matter you are you are welcome the mainstream invites you but the moment you have an outspoken voice the system will strangle you and economic empowerment lack of it is satan's weapon of mass destruction it's worse than backsliding are we together pray in one minute and say i must be exempted in this season please pray 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 are you praying oh every time the devil tried to bring his arsenal and fight the church God is always one strategy ahead one strategy ahead one strategy ahead one strategy ahead keep praying we raise your banner high we shine your light so bright we see I tell you, we will not bow. Hey, we raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in awe of you. Lord, we will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. grace to be valuable that when men say there is a casting down the bible says your gates shall be continually open it will not be short day or night right that you will receive the forces of the gentiles that's what the bible says you can be valuable 
and exempt yourself from the economic whiplash hear me i'm not talking of business i'm not talking of investments i'm talking of being so valuable carrying something that cannot be found in the earth realm carrying something that is not of an earthly origin hallelujah please sit down sit down i told you there'll be lots of impartations we'll pray my passion is that something will come upon your life listen let me tell you something brothers and sisters when this glory of god comes on a man it will change you you will veto laws and walk as if satan does not exist never trivialize the anointing it's a big deal i'm not talking of being anointed where you are competing with people and fighting no god raises you by his grace and puts you in a pedestal kabarataya no mammon no devil no policy affects you it's a realm it's a dimension we frown at the supernatural because we think we're in an intellectual realm. Many times when pastors speak, a lot of business people just say, these guys are daft, they don't know what they're saying. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The voice of God. The Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd. That is why I will not want. The Lord is my shepherd. A shepherd guides. He knows where the green grasses are. He says, he leads me. He leads me. And thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. Isaiah 48 verse 17. Right? I am the Lord that teacheth thy hands to profit. some of you this is what you will need you will step into a place and men will look for you who said where you are staying is too far you have not carried something when you carry something listen let me tell you when you know you are anointed when no price is too much to meet you you are really anointed when no price is too much to meet you have you watched people during foil scarcity they have their money but they still kill and they are not angry that's how valuable foil is when you get to a point where people don't mind trekking from anywhere to say i have learned that the wisdom of god is upon your mouth and we have come as a nation that's where joshua selman is going to Koinonia is not an exclusive reserve of preachers. Power was never for preachers. Power is for them who will survive in this season. Because there are gates that you must stand against. And it takes the anointing. It takes unction. Not stories. Not preaching. Unction. Listen. Churches are closing because there's no results. We argue and say it doesn't matter. But they are closing. The devil is closing them. The devil is closing them. People are coming in with devilish policies against the church. You know why? They have not seen our relevance. By the time a city cannot do without the church, no devil will close it. No devil will close it. Listen. So the key is not just making noise. The key is rising to that point. Please hear me. 
when you become valuable, listen, listen. If I give you 500,000 to go and invest, you can make money. If I give you a product to sell, if this is 100 naira, everybody you sell to, you will sell at 100 naira. So you move at their pace. But when you become valuable, your reward is left to the perception of your benefactors. One person can see you and give you 100,000 because that's what he perceives. The next person can give you 10 million because that's what he perceives. It's the key to accelerating ourselves to enter that wealthy place. Let me tell you, some levels of businesses are too slow to supply the funds required for kingdom advancement. It takes being valuable. The queen of Sheba, there was no watch on Solomon. She carried her treasure to Solomon. There are Shebas, there are Cyruses that must arise with their treasure. And I'm praying prophetically that someone tonight, an unction, an unction, an unction from the throne, an unction from the throne will come upon someone that will change your life where your voice becomes like the voice of God. Listen, let me tell you this. There will be no longer begging in the church. All that depending on the world system. No! The key is not to sit down waiting for someone to employ you as good as that is. The key has been given to us. The Holy Ghost handing you the keys that can open any door and you will watch mammon. Mammon will watch you and not be able to do anything. Listen, I saw this in the vision that the Lord showed me. Many people will be constrained. Their, their life, it will be as if they should die because the doors are closed. Let me quickly talk about the two points. We're rounding up. There is a key that will conquer exhaustion in this season. Please write it down. There are many weary people and it's natural to be weary. But let me tell you the key. Please hear me. I want you to write it. It's a very simple key. Spend time praying in the spirit. Spend time, I didn't say pray in the spirit at will, carelessly when you want. Spend time praying in the spirit. I want you to fan your prayer life in a dimension that will be too hot for any devil. Bishop Oyedeko said, no matter how mad a man is, no matter how mad a man is, he will not enter fire in the name of madness. Are we together? You want to survive the tides? Brothers and sisters, let me tell you, your prayer altar must be like the seven times hotter fire that they threw the Hebrew boys. The Bible says those who threw them themselves were burned to death. Are we together? You lie down on your bed, you turn a little shaka. Where your prayer creates an effect. You enter your house as you are shouting in tongues. Something is happening. You are shaking gates. Prayer. Read your Bible. Has always been the key to true apostolic and prophetic revival. When you pray. Let me tell you, no matter how dead your spiritual life is. When you invest in prayer, you will burn that devil to nonsense. He must give you more. I don't mean prayer that you are just asking and begging and crying. That's why I said pray in the spirit. Because for many of us, our prayer in understanding is petition and languishing and pain and anger. But you lock yourself. And you pray. I'm not just saying when you are in your prayer room, you are moving on the road. You are praying beneath your voice. Somebody drops a charm at you, it backfires on him. By night, he has become mad. Are we together? Someone is carrying a talisman, and you are sitting down, and you are going to Sabo. He will drop at main gates because the fire is too hot. He 
makes listen he makes his ministers wind spirits right his angel spirits and his ministers flames i've said it again i pity the herbalist that will make concoction and call my name as is it's not only that it will not work if it didn't work he has still insulted me he will fry to death physically physically i'm not i'm not motivating you you think they've not tried it how can you be leading a ministry like this and not tried it only god knows till we get to heaven before we know how many poisons we have eaten let me tell you something when your prayer life is alive and healthy anytime you are walking just imagine in your head fire literal fire are we together john wesley said set yourself on fire and the whole world will come to watch you burn set yourself on fire stop discussing things with people who cannot help you go and lock yourself your body says i'm tired you say you are joking as you begin to pray you will first feel weak for a few minutes keep praying it's normal just keep praying when you touch that escape velocity you will touch a realm where strength you cannot explain will land upon you you plan to pray for one hour you will stretch five hours believe me i know what i'm saying nobody starts praying just out of comfort it's like you are starting you are tired you are moving you are tired keep praying don't say ah this and that the devil will tell ah, there's something in the fridge have you don't just keep praying oh apostle but i'm praying and thinking about women keep praying that's what is supposed to solve there is a level to which the fire will be too hot your flesh must burn and allow your spirit access listen when the holy ghost is called fire it's not just what we do in church fire fire no he's real fire fire is a mystery those who will pray in this season will record unbelievable breakthroughs believe me travel you pray in the spirit thank god we have a very robust prayer department you come there and stretch it out with destiny after two hours your antenna is to the heavens any demon is flying above you they hang there they hang there because you are passing you are not even praying the fire will roast every devil around anywhere that's what we are talking about listen many of us are too cold that's why the devil will come and sit on your destiny and it will look like nothing is happening there are cold churches a spirit will arise from somewhere and just come and sit upon the man of God and his wife and his family. But for Koinonia, no way. Shout no way. No way. Fire. When there is fire burning, somebody will come with migraine. As he's crossing that, 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 that junction to enter Koinonia, the migraine will just leave. That's fire speaking. That's fire speaking. It works. But if you walk it, it's not a gift. It's a labor in the spirit. This is the labor dimension of spiritual growth. Men will pay you. Let me tell you. Your, your, your job is to just become genuinely anointed by the power of God. And you watch what God will do in your life. It's what a Jimmy calls transformational wealth. That dimension of wealth that is tied to people rewarding you. Because the last time they shook your hand, every gate opened. Every every gate open just by shaking you do you think they want to be your friend absolutely absolutely praying in the spirit becoming valuable praying in the spirit becoming valuable the third key in this season is the power of corporate fellowship the power of corporate fellowship if the devil can successfully isolate you in this season just know that you are quarter to die are we together there is a difference between isolation and solitude once the devil wants to destroy you let me tell you what he will do look up please he will use offense huh? and push away everybody every intercessor in your life you will fight with him 
Everybody who has grace and love for you, you will fight with him. He will push every relevant person, push you to the wall alone. And then that's where you sit down there and become a victim of his assaults. A corporate life is a powerful key in the realm of the spirit. The power of a corporate life. That you come together and where I am almost giving up as you land with your fire based on unity of faith and the spirit of brotherhood before my fire jacks up your fire is roasting every devil that I came with are we together corporate fellowship how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity it is like the oil that flows from the head of Aaron that priest down to his bed down to his skirt he said for there the Lord has commanded the blessing corporate life I'm a man of God of myself you will pay for it in this season you need corporate grace corporate grace corporate grace because no matter what you have seen you will need that sometimes that corporate grace will help you confirm if the path you are walking is of God the devil can isolate you and you just keep moving and you are flattering yourself until you land in fire. Are we together? But Koinonia, we are going to pray. I don't know about you, but for as long as you are genuinely connected to this ministry, you must be exempted from this nonsense that is ravaging nations. It's like an angel of death is entering families. Bam! Sickness incurable diseases have you heard recently how people are dying just from headache they say somebody has headache before they rush him to the hospital he's dead oh, come on a woman is pregnant just when labor starts she becomes deaf and dumb then she dies we are going to drive that devil out of zaria are you ready to pray no we are going to pray there is a church in zaria and we will pray we will pray and drive it far and say we surround this city with a mystery that makes any enchantment not to be able to thrive we represent god's seat of of governance in this city and we must pray there's no room for carelessness we must pray lift your voice and pray in tongues for a while make sure you participate everybody don't be tired we are praying. Kata pras kata para tekete. Shaka taka tosho pakata bada 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 bada. Young and old, everyone pray. Shapa rapa tosho to preka teke repa katosh. Enkre te seka te para da para teka shigere bada bada. Rande ke te proso to pakara da bada 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 sarva kata preka da bada bosh. Shike teke te kara ta kata bada 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 Shapa karaka to soto prekete em prekete go soto koto parada parada ba Shikete parada parate sekete prekete bele bo Are you praying Le te kra soto parata kate prekete ne baka Hallelujah Anointing for Like you to sing it as a prayer from the depth of your heart.
Hallelujah. Listen. Our family members are depending on us, not our preaching. The activity of the power of God upon our lives. There are people standing here. Let me tell you, listen. This thing that I saw, there are families I know. I saw it happening too in that vision. And I'd like you to pray. You are not desiring the anointing out of covetousness. You need it. There are, there are thrones and dominions that must be subdued. And Apostle Joshua Selma may not be there. The goal is not to have one superstar. The goal is that you carry fire and go to your regions and begin to speak the purposes of God. And while you are doing that, God will compel men to lift you. It has nothing to do with ministry. Please, I'd like you to pray and say, Father, let a strange unction fall upon my life. Oh, let the earthly become heavenly. Let the earthly become heavenly. Let the earthly become heavenly. In this season, they that will survive must be men of power, authentic unction, unction beyond imagination, unction beyond argument, unction beyond argument, unction beyond argument. Ta 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 ta. Lord, send that fire upon my life. Send that fire upon my gifts. Send that fire upon my degree. Send that fire upon my PhD. Send that fire upon my business. Send that fire upon my company. Send that fire upon my church. Send that fire upon my family. Leka teke teko rotos ko prondos ki barakatia. Shega dega dega ne poso to prondos ko prikete. Embrindas ka prikete teke teke te. Oh yes, send that fire upon my life. Send that unction upon my life. The earnest expectation of creation awaits my manifestation. Thou shall arise. And have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time. 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 Hallelujah. Listen. Listen one encounter with the anointing can give you an open door that your lifetime will not exhaust it if you believe what i'm telling you one encounter one one encounter can open a financial door for you that will wipe your tears one encounter can make you a friend to somebody who will pay your beans a friend with him forever one encounter listen listen hallelujah i'd like you to pray a prayer you've heard us pray it here but i want you to pray it with all your heart everyone appointed to reward my grace i compel them to appear go ahead and pray it's not enough to have an anointing there are men who can reward your grace? There are institutions. Shapakata rekete. 
Send them, O oh God, to Koinonia. Send them to your people. Men and women who need what you carry. Your entrepreneurial anointing. Your leadership anointing. Your spirit of motherhood. Send them to my life, O oh God. Men and women who have what it takes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, listen, look up. Look up. I know very anointed men and women. They love God passionately, but they have never met the people assigned to bless them. You don't preach for money. You don't carry the anointing just for money. But you see, God designed it in such a way that as you dispense the realities of the kingdom, there is a feedback system that should empower you so you continue being effective. Are we together? Listen. The day you stand in the presence, you see, many of us are around people who love our gifts but do not have the grace to reward it. Are we together? You can labor and pray and fast and go and preach somewhere and someone will pat your back and say, wow, you are an awesome man of God. I've never seen a man of God in this state like you. That's not enough reward. But there is a way you can have an encounter and someone will come and bring a generator, buy you a car and say, what does it take to stop you from thinking about the finances? If you are such a voice, I should sponsor you rising to any level. There are men like that. There are some of us, the value you have now, let me tell you sincerely, the value you have now you, is, is enough for you to be blessed forever. But you have not encountered those who have what it takes. Listen, there are pastors, hear me, who until you preach somewhere where your helpers are, that's what will expand your church. All of a sudden, it will be like they are hearing you for the first time. Yes, I know there are millions of men of God in Nigeria, but there are others assigned to honor you, you, you. You can be singing, singing songs, laboring and traveling from pillar to post. But if you can discern, God can send you to somebody who has the means but needs your music. When it was time for the lifting of David, a spirit was upon Saul. And Saul needed a musician to drive it. All of a sudden, they went and fished out David. How many times did David play for Saul? When he played just once, Saul loved him. There are circles that I have entered. And I ministered once. And God connected me to people who will bless me forever. And that day, it wasn't even as if I was saying anything. It was just that God connected me to people who will be blessed tomorrow when asaba a mighty meeting happening in the stadium and we're going to minister they started preparing for this meeting tomorrow one year one year they came to book one year in advance they have been praying logistics publicity all over the city and we're going to go and storm the gates of hell there is some you are not assigned everywhere Look, you need to pray that those assigned to honor what you carry. Otherwise, you'll be frustrated trying to be everything to anybody. Lift your voice one more time and say, direct them, oh God. Direct them. Direct them to me. Oh, in this season, direct my blessers. Direct those you have sent to be blessed by my ministry. Direct those who have been sent to be blessed by my business. Shabakata Bush on the Prozasike Ruta Sabarikata. Direct them. You are a prophet, but not to everyone. That God will bring the ears of those who have been anointed to hear your voice. You are an apostle not to everyone that God will direct the people the institutions
Alléluia. We're going to be praying that in this season, please hear me, that in this season, God will grant you grace to have passion for the house of God. That you will not allow the devil corner you somewhere and destroy you and destroy your family. He said, as for me and my house, I don't know about you, but as for me, I have made up, but the Bible says, they that be planted, no flimsy excuses. Oh, we are tired today. They that be planted in the house of God, they will flourish in the courts of our God. I'd like you to pray passionately and say, Lord, grace and passion for your house. Grace and passion. Grace and passion for your house. Supernatural grace. Supernatural passion for your house. For your house. For your house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are rounding up. One category of people who will be exempted from any nonsense in this season are passionate and addicted soul winners. Listen, listen. There was a time they needed money to pay for tax it was a period that they needed money desperately they had come to collect tax and jesus said go and catch fish and fish in the bible is symbolic of souls when they caught those souls in that mission work they found money as they were preaching god provided a way as they were preaching fishers of men they went to fish and they said open the mouth of that fish as that fish testifies the greatness of god and confesses with his mouth the lordship of christ you engage a law automatically that brings you wealth hear me please believe what i'm saying there are many people here who love god we are prayer warriors but we are not so winners you stand up alone and drag yourself to koinonia you wave your roommates you wave your family members you come here and get blessed while you are getting blessed the devil is using them to destroy your blessing you go back home a soul winner is an intercessor lord you must change my family members there are people who can come on friday and say look i'm going around this place have you heard about koinonia you've never really come you see this this our shame big boy big girl there are no big boys and big girls in the kingdom it takes passion when you are doggedly involved in soul winning you schedule seasons of exemption i can tell you this i can tell you this are we together you are in your office you are there and you leave every other person someone tells you uh-uh um the devil is trying to manipulate my life. Oga Jordan did something today that blessed me so, so much. Some people came to his shop to buy books. And the way they began to talk, at once he knew it was a demonic situation. God has given you spiritual intelligence. There is a way you hear people talk. What they are saying in the realm of the spirit is, I need help. You just listen to them and say bye-bye. The moment they began to talk, you know, Oga Jordan said this and that. They wanted to see me and he said, oh, it may not be easy to see me. But he bought communion and took a bike and came and said, I should pray on the communion. And returned it back and gave the people. And I was looking at him. I said, why won't he explode? Let me tell you, if God, if your life becomes an epitome of support for God's interest, forget about begging. This is the God I serve. You may not know all you need to know. But that your life can find space to bring God. This is how this ministry started. Every night, somebody was dragging somebody. Come and get filled with the Holy Ghost. Come and get born again. You may not have the power to change them. But you have what it takes to invite them. Some of you, 50 naira is what you need to draw a soul. Ah, Koinonia has a crowd. It's not about competition of crowd. It's about destinies that must change. 
Are we together? What's wrong with calling your loved ones and say, there is, there is a platform now to hear this online. Since you think you are too sick to come, connect to the miracle service. You see, let me tell you something. This is what we do that produces some of the results. Anybody that is too big to win souls is too big to experience the favor of God. If you are too big to win souls, too big to win souls. Ah, I preached and they insulted me. So what? Didn't Jesus say it? Blessed are you when men persecute and revile you. Rejoice! For so they did the prophets and the rest. You have social media platforms that you can use as platforms to draw people to the house of God where they can be blessed. You see, until you see yourself as part of what God is doing, you are not entitled to his blessings. When you see yourself as somebody who just comes for koinonia, leave the workers and the ministers. When you exempt yourself, you also exempt yourself from that covenant of blessing. He said, if you are the children of Abraham, you will do the works of Abraham. I'd like you to pray before I speak over our lives. Lord, grace to be intentional about saving people from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Grace to be a conduit for someone to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Grace to be a channel for someone to receive the teachings that will change their life. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. I want to pray for you. And I want you to believe it. Praise the Lord. This prayer is, is not just, I know that I pray impartations every time. Don't you think you are getting the same thing? You see, one thing with grace is when it comes. Yes, I know that some of us, it's not yet time for manifestation. But you can begin to do something with it. Are we together? One day, instead of dragging somebody to go for prayer department prayer, before the prayer department, teach the person on the baptism in the Holy Ghost. And try to lay hands on the person by yourself before you go everybody must have room to start something if someone is sick don't just say here is apostles number here is head of department prayer here is a sister head of department here is a jimmy or pastor femi or pastor alpha or every any any other person no you can tell him look i agree with you i am part of a family that has a healing anointing and i want to agree with you if you pray with the person and nothing happens there's nothing to be embarrassed about everybody you see had an occasion to begin to exercise themselves anointings are useless if you are not ready to use them god does not waste he said gather the fragments that there be no waste are we together i want to pray for you there are three things i'm going to pray for you the anointing for uncommon wisdom that's the first thing i'll pray for you let me tell you i know many foolish people it's not by age i have seen this ancient wisdom upon my life as young as i look i have seen it i know it is real i saw it in people i coveted it with my heart and the day it landed upon me i knew the anointing for wisdom strategies two the anointing for favor you need favor in this season favor is not when you do things by yourself favor is when god raises men to do things for you it's not about having money it's about the appearance of men in your life to wipe your tears it's called favor number three the supernatural power of the holy ghost to provide solutions to people there are sick people there are oppressed people waiting for joshua selman to heal everybody's idolatry that's not god's design god's design is that you become an extension of what we represent that when we cannot be there you can 
can arise they tell you a woman is failing to give birth you lay hands on her stomach and ask her to give birth there and then no cs it has nothing to do with being a pastor or being a prophet you don't need to carry any ministry you just need to carry the spirit of grace lift your hands the spirit of wisdom spirit of wisdom there is a level of wisdom that is beyond age it's not found in the realm of men it comes from heaven job was asked a question when cometh this wisdom where is it where is it they ask the place of the dead and he says it's not with us we don't know where it is he said only god knows the place thereof hmm? whose price is higher than rubies he said does not wisdom cry her price is far above rubies right he said by me kings reign and princes decree justice with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness I pray for you in the name of Jesus the grace for supernatural wisdom uncommon wisdom let it come upon your life in the name of Jesus receive it in the name of Jesus receive it in the name of Jesus from today you begin to function at a frequency of wisdom that no man will begin to gain say or resist number two the bible says all who saw esther loved her favor there is such a thing as favor there is such a thing as divine supernatural not man-made arranged favor favor from strangers when those who know you favor you it makes sense when a stranger is moved by the holy ghost to serve the purposes of God in your life, your business, and your ministry, then you know that that's favor. Receive that grace for favor. Receive that grace for favor. Receive that grace for favor. Listen, some of you, before the end of this night, strange testimonies, strange testimonies. You are thinking of buying a bible someone brings it you are thinking of buying something someone brings it now that's favor you are looking for a place to pray someone says i have my room anytime you need to pray i give you that's favor you are trusting god to travel for a meeting somewhere you are stranded in car someone says i will sponsor you pay for your flight and bring you back receive that order of testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, holy. Faithful, 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 faithful. Do this, and you will see the power of God in your life in a way that you'll be surprised. Imagine that you are sleeping and all that is playing is a powerful prophecy. Let me tell you what will happen. You will continue listening to it in your dreams. I guarantee you. And that one is powerful because your body that limits the spirit is sleeping. Ah, you will access anointings. You will wake up under a strong presence. I know what I'm saying. Number two, let's hurry up. The second challenge or the second key, I think the rain is settled, so as many, if it's not an interruption, please um, arrange them outside. If they can still squeeze in, that's all right. Number two, let's hurry up, please. The reality of demon spirits and the character of their operation, write it down, is something you cannot ignore 
and prevail in this life. The reality, demon spirits, alongside the character of their operation. The Bible again and again cautions us and says that we should not be ignorant of his devices. Satan has a way he operates. There is a way, there is a system that Satan operates. Anybody who ignores the reality of demon spirits alongside an, an insight into the character of their operations will pay the price severely. Let's look at two scriptures very quickly. Luke chapter 4, please, verse 14 and 18. Media help us. Luke 4, 14 and 18. The Bible says Jesus took the scroll, right? He, the messianic prophecy. And um, go to verse 15, please. Next verse. 15. And he taught in their synagogues being glorified of all 16. You are reading down to 18. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Right? What did he read? Then it was given to him. It was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Esaias. And when he had opened the book, he found a place where it was written. The Messianic prophecy. 18. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. To bind up the broken hearted. To preach what? Deliverance to the captives. There are people under captivity. The reality of demon spirits in our world and the fact that they influence people, Christians and non-believers alike, should not be ignored. Are demons real? The Bible says so. Is Satan real? The Bible says so. Do they oppress people? Yes. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Behold, I give you power, authority. The word there is exousia. Behold, I give you power, Luke 10, 19, to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. So there is the enemy and the enemy has a measure of power. Are we together? And he says, and nothing shall by any means harm you. Look at me, please. Look at me, Koinonia, look at me. Every time Jesus commissioned people, the first thing he told them to do was to cast out demons. Not heal the sick. Cast out demons. Right? When you read, um, let's look at a, a scripture. Mark, Mark 6. We'll read verse 7, then we'll run to 13. Quickly, Mark 6, 7, 13. And he called unto him the 12. Read on, please, it's projected. And did what? And began to send them forth two by two. He gave them power to do what? Clean spirit, on holy spirit, spirits that are out of the influence of the Holy Spirit. They are called unclean spirits. They are everywhere, like the air we breathe. They are responsible for the anger problem in people. Are we together? They are responsible for the barrenness in people. They are responsible for delay and retrogression. They are the ones who appear to you in dreams and sleep with you. They are the ones who appear and cause miscarriages. They are called unclean spirits. Now, regardless of the theological stratification, they are still spirits. The Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, right? But against what? Principalities. Uh -huh. Powers. Rulers of darkness. And spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. They are all called unclean spirits. And there are three ways. That their, their ministry or their life found expression in the earth. Number one is covenants. It's the most powerful way demon spirits advance their cause. Covenants. Number two is ignorance. Ignorance of the precepts and the principles of God. The light shines in darkness. So when there is no light, darkness remains. Are we together? And then number three, disobedience. 
disobedience disobedience demon spirits are real a Christian cannot be possessed but he sure can be influenced absolutely Galatians 5 when you read from verse 16 this I say then walk ye in the spirit and the Bible he was talking to the Galatian church people who had already encountered Christ are we together but this is what he says this I say then that you walk in the spirit so that you will not gratify what the desires of the flesh then he says the flesh lost it after the spirit the spirit after the flesh two of them are consistently contending what does that tell you that you're a Christian does not mean that these demon spirits will not attempt to influence manipulate or wage control over your life there's nothing embarrassing when a Christian is delivered the operation looks like possession but it's not possession and now this is the balance I'm going to create a balance because there are all kinds of prophetic ministries because they do not have a sound word base right and let me tell you something even the prophetic and the supernatural is limited by the recipient's understanding of the operation of the word are we together i can be a genuine prophet of god but because i do not have a sound understanding of scripture i can look at this beautiful lady looking at me and see a spirit behind her and based on my interpretation of that vision, I call her a witch. Are we together? And then I fabricate a strategy. And I say, Oga, oh the solution to dealing with this, your wife, seeing that she's a witch, is to leave her. So that is my, that is my advice based on my limitation. It may not be that I saw a wrong vision. But because my vision was not dealt with on the strength of the word of God for correct interpretation. It's not enough to see. Understandest what thou readest. He was looking. He was not understanding. Demons are real. They are here in this place tonight. Are we together? They came with many people. They came with many families. Many well-meaning people carry them. Our job is to separate you from them. That's what deliverance is. It's a separation. Let me tell you something. In the most authentic definition, deliverance is salvation. Right? The most authentic, in its purest form, deliverance is salvation. It's a complete translation. So every other thing you do is in support of that understanding. Demons are real. Let me tell you, you will be surprised to find out how many things have not been working in your life and can be credited to the ministry of these wicked spirits in our lives. There were many things in my life that didn't used to work for a long time. I tried, I did all I knew to do. But when I realized that, you see, let me tell you something. Because demon spirits have an advantage, hear me. Because demon spirits have an advantage of the realm of the spirit. When you try to fight in the flesh, you will be defeated forever. Every time, at all times, regardless of what you try to do. Someone promises to help you. You go to bed, a stranger appears again. The person gets up in the morning and tells you, I can't remember telling you what I said. Please get out of my office. Something made them do so. The same way there is an anointing that can call a destiny helper into your life. And you say, sorry, I don't need any help again. You say, God told me to do it. I don't like you, but I have to do it. Because something, may that thing, whatever thing it is, it must come upon you today. Yeah. Where men arise to make your life easy. Hallelujah. Demon spirits are real. Don't be embarrassed when you find out that these spirits are leaving you. Rejoice. And listen, please, don't just fall down and stand up and check yourself and feel embarrassed and then go back. No. And by the way, it has nothing, deliverance has nothing to do with falling down and manifesting. It has everything to do with the word of God prevailing over your person and casting out every nonsense that is roaming around your life. So you may be standing quietly. And they are flying out of you. Flying out of your destiny. The, when that, I'm teaching you this so that you will know what to expect and know how to appropriate it. 
So that when you leave this place, you now expect that that door that refused to open. Now that you know a spirit caused it, you expect it to open. So you start saying in the name of Jesus, I expect favor. I expect favor. A woman who has not been able to give birth, has not been able to take in. Husband is well, wife is well, both of you go to the hospital, they say there's nothing wrong as far as they know. Alright, take in madam. She cannot take in. Plants don't need consultation to take it. Animals don't need consultation. As haphazard as they are, the law still works. Because demons are not interested in the animals. They are interested in human beings. They are interested in your destiny. That's why they will refuse that you will not get that child. But the devil is a liar tonight. What of all those, all those lumps and all those nonsense that grow around your body? lumps in your breast, lump in your stomach, lump every part, movements around your body, what do you think it's called? The Holy Spirit does not move in people in a foolish way. The Holy Spirit is, is, is he's an intelligent spirit. He does not oppress people. Do you know there are people here who cannot sleep? Young people, you, you, you watch them and they are still awake. Because the moment they close their eyes is a nightmare. Demons are real. The last key, number three. That the Lord will have us tonight to know. All of us must possess this if we really need result. It's your faith. Your faith, your faith, your faith, your faith, your faith. Your faith. My faith reaches out to you. And I believe your word. Listen, let me tell you something about faith. Most of us, our understanding about faith is just for reception. But faith is also an instrument of defense. Ephesians 6 verse 16. Therefore, holding forth the shield. Because there are times between prophecy and manifestation you will need to stand. Faith becomes the weapon you use to shield yourself. That when another word comes and says, Kai, can you imagine Pastor Alpha, is this thing really working? And then the shield of faith, you lift it. And he said, no way. I know that my Redeemer liveth is working. If it's working, show me the evidence. Faith is the substance. Of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. He says above all. Taking the shield of what? Faith. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench. 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 The fiery darts of the enemy. Listen. Faith is the result of an understanding. Faith is the result of an understanding. It produces persuasion. It's from the Greek word pistis. Conviction based on an understanding. He says, but I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. Just like I'm persuaded that someone's testimony will turn around. I mean, somebody's life will turn around tonight. I am persuaded. Listen. It's not just what you do that produces result. But the faith that backs what you do. The conviction that backs what you do. Faith is powerful. The Bible says by it the elders obtain a good report. So if you need a good report you will need that faith to obtain it tonight. And there are many of us who are trusting God for good reports. You want to change the doctor's report. You want to change every kind of nonsense report that the devil has brought. It will take faith. It will take faith. Conviction. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it everyone. Say in the name of Jesus. I believe in the power of God. I believe that nothing is impossible for God. And tonight. God. Through his spirit. Will birth my testimony. I believe that with all my heart. I came in. There were people in Abuja. My Bible, uh, at the back of my Bible is full of all kinds of people's prayer requests. 
You cannot imagine people dropping their prayer requests. Apostle, please as you are going back, can we drop our prayer requests? All the way. Because there is a God that answers prayers. Please hear me, Koinonia. Tonight, like we prayed earlier on, I want you to get angry with the situation in your life. You see, I cannot make you tired of it. I can only encourage you. He said, woe to them who are at ease in Zion. The day you are tired, you will change. Let today be that day. Rise up on your feet, everybody. Go ahead and pray in the spirit. Lord, my time has come. Are you praying, Koinonia? Lord, this health thing, I can't remain sick forever. No. This SS genotype, this HIV, this cancer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just one more prayer point and then we'll begin to minister. I'd like you to say, Lord, grace to not doubt you tonight. Please lift your voice and pray. Don't be a doubter. Lord, I believe in you. Lord, I believe in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me add one more prayer point in our lives. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, whatever must come upon my life for me to move forward. Hold on. Let it come. And whatever must leave me. I have no loyalty to you. I don't care where you came from. Tonight I part ways with you forever. Lift your voice and pray. anointing that must land upon my life today. Every grace, every spirit, every dimension tonight you must come upon my life and everything that must leave me. I'm tired of any luggage upon my destiny. Koinonia, are you praying? Those online, make sure you are praying. Right where you are, at your home, so wherever you are streaming from. Hallelujah. 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 One of the graces I'm trusting God to come upon our life is grace for accelerated advancement. Listen, listen. There are many of us, our pace of movement is slow. You can't look at your life and say, A, B, C has happened within this time. It's not a good testimony. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I must move. Oh, I must move. There must be advancement. The overflows. Make sure you are praying. God is sharing you where you are.
Yes, oh God. I'm parting ways forever. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. Listen. You must contend with prophecy. Oh, this bad luck upon my life must leave. I was not cursed like that. Even if it's a curse, it must go. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Say a war unto them who are at ease in Zion. There is enough function tonight to deliver the result you desire, except you are not interested. If you truly are interested and you are angry enough, tonight is not the time to spectate and pinch and gist. Anybody does that kind of thing for you tonight, know that the spirit is using that person. You can't come here and waste your time. Hallelujah. I'm about to pray for you. I'm about to speak. Please, I want you to pray. Mention every negative thing that you know has happened, patterns in your life that you know must change and say, God, arise for me tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, it must go over my family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen. 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 Before God deals with our lives, we are going to be praying first and foremost that God will deal with our families. See, let me tell you something. It's not your fault that you came from that family. But it's your fault if you allow what came from there to destroy you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Believe what I'm saying, oh Koinonia. Believe what I'm saying. I love you too much to not lie to you. There are, there are ties and strongholds that are stopping people from rising. Lift your hands, everybody. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Now listen. Don't get too used to the fact that it's just about speaking and then people fall under the anointing and come be serious while prayers are going. Because it is at the word of God they respond. They are listening to me. I'm speaking. But until the command is given, there is nothing to confirm. I want to pray. Many of you will be very surprised. Open up your spirit. It's time for God to visit you and visit your families. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, please. My God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit pointed arrows. Listen. Pointed arrows. Pointed arrows. And on those arrows I see like papers placed on the arrows containing the names of people, names of families, names of territories. That's what the Lord is showing me right now. And we're going to pray. Listen. The power of God is going to come very strongly upon people. It's, it's not just you but your family are we together and once that happens 
know that the time has come. You pray it and declare that deliverance. Lift your hands. I want to pray now. Father, you brought us here to change lives, change testimonies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is giving me a very crazy instruction. Just lift your left hand. Be stupid. I've started my stupidity. Just follow me quietly. Just lift your left hand up to God and let me do the speaking. You don't have to say anything. Please, all those who I'm going to speak to now that the power of God comes on them, let's begin to have them outside. <sighs> Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now. My God, I'm seeing so many people. I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just responding to the Spirit. Lord, you ask us to lift our left hands up. Whatever that means, there are people. I see fire right now. It's going to begin to come on people. Lord, the moment that comes on their family, let there be massive deliverances. At the count of four, that will happen now. One, two, shakapatakata, three, four. Bring them out. Bring them out. Bring them out right now, inside, outside. I'm seeing the spirit of God. There's fire moving to families. Please, let's save time. Shabbat At the word of the Lord, I place the word of the Lord upon that situation of witchcraft. Inside, outside. It's over, it's over, it's over. It's over. I come with a word of prophecy. I prophesy as I've been commanded. Miracles. Deliverances. For families. Enough is enough, oh God. Bring them. There are so many people outside. So many people outside. All the overflows. I see miracles. It's like fire. It's like fire. Hallelujah. Keep your hands down. I'm seeing fire. And it's going to come upon the heads of people. And the Lord is saying it is still the deliverance. Lord, where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Right now, all over the congregation. I prophesy it like fire. I see like an eruption. A volcanic eruption. Coming on the heads of people. The heads of people. Shake it, take it Where you are, the fire will meet you there. Where you are, where you are. The enemy has done this. We command every havoc. We command every havoc. Kaba tayata. I tell you, I see deliverance for many families. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. I command every spirit. Causing the tragedies. In my family. Be exposed now. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. The light shines in the darkness. The light shines in the darkness. As you are praying, the power of God will come upon you. As you are praying, the power of God will come upon you. Be exposed. The spirits eating up finances. Eating up joy, eating up peace. Lord, kapa ta ta ta, ekerato soto basiata. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. 
Lift your hands. I see written on this pulpit altars. And I want to pray. An altar is a platform erected by men that grants access to spiritual operations. Altars, 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 altars. At the count of seven, I tell you many people, this is not just families now. One, two, three, four, get ready. Five, six, seven, right now. Right now, right now, right now. Altars, catch fire. Altars, catch fire, catch fire, catch fire, catch fire, catch fire. Shake it, take a poro sotoba. Lift your hands, everybody. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. The Lord is asking me to call situations the moment i call them all those who are victims of it the power of god will come upon them please we are going to be fast right now i pray the spirit of failure upon people i'm seeing it lord wherever they are right now at the count of three let there be an exposition one two three go 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 failure failure Failure, causing failure in lives, failure in destinies, failure in ministries, failure in business. Failure in academics. Every form of failure, fire is coming on it right now. Fire is coming on it right now. Inside, outside. No, you can't stand it. It's your deliverance. It's your word. It's your prophecy. It's your word. That's why you came. Failure. Lift your hands, everybody. I'm seeing chains, and the Lord is saying, Let delay leave my people. That's what I'm hearing. Lord, where are those whose lives have been under one spot, inside and outside? At the count of three, I like you to shout, Jesus, delay is leaving now. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. Delay, delay, delay of all kinds, of all kinds. Harato Soto Peketesh. Delay. Delay. All kinds of delay. All kinds of delay. All kinds of delay. Be broken now. Now. Let her go in the name of Jesus. Let her go. I break that chain now. 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 That chain of delay. That chain of delay is broken over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. God is breaking delay. Listen. Hallelujah. I've prayed this prayer in this place before and the Lord is asking me to pray it again. That the destinies of men can be exchanged. So that you are walking. But you are not living your destiny. It's like you are living another person's life. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Please take this prayer seriously. It will do wonders in your life. Lift your hands. Inside and outside. 
and you watch what will happen now. Lord, I pray. My God, I'm telling you, all I'm seeing in this place is fire. Any man here, any woman whose destiny has been exchanged so that the life you are living is not your blueprint right now. Let the exchange, let there be another exchange, another exchange, another exchange. The power of God is coming on people right now, right now, right now. Release their destiny. Release that mother's destiny now. Release that mother's destiny now. My goodness. It's your destiny. It's your destiny. You can't leave another person's script. Every witchcraft. Every manipulation. I curse it now. I curse it now. I curse it now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is asking me to pray for people with strange movements in their body. I tell you, I feel fire. It's like people are literally bathing in fire. Strange movements. I want to pray. There are many ladies, many mothers under this category. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Every stranger, there is a lady, you feel a physical snake, physical snake moving on your body. But right now, in Jesus' name, at the count of three, fire from the throne, fire from the throne. I command those spirits roaming around the bodies of God's people. One, two, three, go, go, go. Go, go. Go now. Leave their bodies. Strange objects. Strange objects. Strange objects. Strange objects. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, sisters, lift your hands. I want to pray a very powerful prayer for our sisters. The devil will prefer to get one woman to ten men. Because a woman is a gate in the realm of the spirit. I tell you, no power will stand there. Something is about to jump out of somebody's life. Ay, ay, ay. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Yeah. Break every chain. Let her go right now. Your destiny must open up. In the name of Jesus Christ. Break every chain. Lift your hands, sisters. There are many ladies here under several oppressions. That's why many things are not working. But sisters, as surely as the Lord lives, at the count of three, I'd like you to shout Jesus. You will be surprised to see what will happen to you. Are you ready? One, two, three. Deliverance for you right now. Deliverance. Help them, my goodness. Please help them. Gates, 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 be broken, gates, be broken, Papataya, gates, be broken, gates, be broken, gates, be broken. I'm praying it again. Lift your hands. Ay, ay, ay. Every devil that came here with you must let you go. Lift your hands. There are sisters. There is already a programming on your destiny to fail. A programming to be barren. Who is this God that can look into time? 
wherever they are at the count of three may the power of god fish them out one two three take that fire take that fire take that fire i open your destiny every lady every sister you are a gate you are a gate in the realm of the spirit mighty deliverance mighty breakthrough mighty breakthrough mighty breakthrough is over is over is over by the power of the holy ghost over 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 Break every chain. Break every chain. Yeah. Break every chain. Hallelujah. Now I want to pray for the brothers. Lift your hands. Listen, let me tell you. There is a spirit that makes men not to be productive. Hear me. It's a, it's, it's a mighty deliverance that will happen to many men right now. Pay attention. There are men who are just going old. There's nothing happening in their lives. It's not your fault. There are keys that have been withheld from you. But that thief must be exposed. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Ancestry. Ancestry. That's the first thing we are dealing with the brothers. Brothers, lift your hands. I want to pray. Many of you will be surprised to see what happens. Every spirit of ancestry, every spirit of inheritance over any brother here, stopping his advancement at the count of three, some of you will be very surprised. That fire will come on you. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Take it. Take it. Take it. That fire. Help them, please. Help them. My goodness. Kaparata kata. Brothers are coming under this unction. It's time to move forward. It's time to move forward. Help them. I cast that spirit. I cast that spirit. I cast that spirit. Hallelujah. God does this all the time. And I don't know why God is doing this again. <laughs> ah. If he did it before, he can do it again. Say Listen, I see something strange happening. Strange happening. Strange happening in the spirit. And I'm seeing the spirit of the Lord moving. And God is saying he's visiting Easternans. Easternans, evil people. That's what I'm seeing. There are altars that need to be broken. Please pay attention. I'm about to pray right now. Wherever they are, always he will do it. You are from the east, get set. Be sensitive. Come on, you shouldn't be doing that. Shaparato kaparatia. Isanans. Lord, wherever they are, it will come like fire on you. You will be surprised to see what will happen to you now. The Spirit of God goes to the east. The Spirit of God goes to the east and is bringing deliverance. Deliverance. Strange deliverance. Evil people. Strange deliverance by the power of the Holy Ghost is visiting your soil, visiting your foundation, visiting your soil. If it did it before, it can do it 
it again. Same God back then. Same God right now. If it did it before, Abia, 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 Abia said, Shakata Barata, Abia, Abia, the Spirit of God is moving across Abia, miracles, breaking foundations. If he did it before, he can do it again. Same God back then. Hallelujah. Many of you wonder why God does these things. There are signs and wonders. He steps into, you will see the testimonies that will come from this thing. Strange visitation. Lift your hands, everybody. Joshua Selman. God, please. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. I'm walking in the spirit and I see a map. And the Lord is asking me to jump upon it. And I see Kaduna. Southern Kaduna. That's what I see. Right now, Lord, at your word, move. Southern Kaduna. Visiting men and women. That's what the spirit of God is saying. I speak it. I place the word of God upon it. Lord, go to that region right now. Southern Kaduna. Southern Kaduna from Saminaka to Zonkua. Everywhere. Move. Let the power of God touch people. Liberty for territories. Liberty for territories. No matter where you are, I'm telling you, Southern Kaduna, fire is falling. Fire is falling upon your soil. Upon your soil, Southern Kaduna, Southern Kaduna, that's what I see. Southern Kaduna, connected to Southern Kaduna, there is a miracle happening. Altars in Southern Kaduna, I come against you by this apostolic and prophetic mantle. Leave God's people now. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you this operation of the Spirit, I found it working in my life, is powerful. God just calls a territory, and everyone is like a digital spiritual system. It's not something you just do by guesswork. It's the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God. The Spirit of God. God is still touching Kaduna people. I'm still hearing it in my spirit. God is still touching Kaduna people. There's no escape. Any family tied to any altar comes under fire. Any Kaduna family married to Kaduna living in Kaduna state Hallelujah. Please lift your hands while still praying. I want to pray for students now. Something miraculous will happen here now. I want to pray for students because I see conspiracy to short circuit people's performances. I'm going to pray. But there is a God in heaven with an all-seeing eye. 
and there is an unction he can release. I'm going to pray. Listen, let me tell you, you will be surprised to hear the testimonies that will come. The way God is working this night is very supernatural. If the power of God comes upon you, I want you to know that an angel is doing something over your result. Just hear what I'm saying. Hear what I'm saying. I'm speaking by the Spirit. Father, there are people whose results need to be worked upon divinely. And where are they? I see almost 45 people. Right now at the count of three. One. Results. Two. Three. Let the angels begin to move. As they move, it will affect you. As the power of God touches you, your result is being worked upon by the power of the Holy Ghost inside and outside. Results, results. Carry of us receiving the mercy of God. Receiving the mercy of God. God upgrading CGPS. Upgrading CGPS. Take it. Take it, take it, take it, take it. CGPS by the power of the Holy Ghost. Supernaturally, by the creative power of prophecy. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Everything that has refused to let you smile. Hear me. That joy and laughter will not come out of your mouth. I stand tonight in the name of Jesus. I bring that thing under fire. I bring it under fire. I bring it under fire. Shake a ta ta ta. I bring it under fire. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Just lift your hands and be silent if you can. A miracle is happening. A miracle is happening. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing letters in the spirit. And these are employment letters. Hold on. Just keep your hands. Just do what I'm asking you to do. You will be surprised. Many of you for you and for your loved ones. The Lord is just asking. Just lift your hands. Father, at least 17 people inside outside there are up to five people online supernatural jobs may the angels of breakthrough take this word to the people right now right now right now right now receive it receive those letters in the spirit receive it in the spirit receive it in the spirit receive it in the spirit, it in the spirit. for you for your loved ones I don't care what they read. I don't care what they have. We give them jobs by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I see at least four people. Three of them are ladies in the congregation. Your mothers are due for promotion. But they've done everything they know to do. As I'm speaking right now, an anointing will come upon you to signify what he's doing to them. Lord, go ahead. Locate them. Promotion. I force it. I force it now. I force that promotion. Take it. Carry it for your mothers. Whoever is sitting on their promotion, Whoever is sitting on their promotion. The judgment of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for the sick. But... Um, There are two women I want to pray for here. 
you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Now, I know there are many people. Listen, there are two women particularly. One of them, the anointing of, please, no standing for wife, no standing for anybody. If you are not the person, um, sit down. If you are not married, don't come here. Praise God, please. The two women by themselves, I'm going to pray. That lady, oh, let me let me let me pray for her. that devil. Let her go. Don't disturb us. Don't waste our time. Out, out now. Out in the name of Jesus. I curse you by the God of heaven. In the name of Jesus, you are living. Release her family. Release her destiny right now. The noise maker. Out you go and don't waste our time. In Jesus' name, I set her free. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, please listen. We are going to pray for those two women I don't know if there are here the two of them here, there's one of them um, I'm seeing one of them the anointing of the spirit is going to come upon her, I don't know who that person is but there's one, please we have such people, we have to be fast if I mention your case once we give you one minute, there's no response, we have to move so that God can help us, please except if they are outside there then that's alright a married woman that need the fruit of the womb we have to pray for them right now praise the lord how many of us are trusting god for healing miracles in our bodies let me see your hands i know many of our mothers are in this category no matter what the case is who is stand up come on the power of god will come upon that person please make sure they are married though Please stand up, stand up, madam. It's okay. Um, madam, madam, it's okay. Please. Madam, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. How many years have you been married? 20 years. 20 years. No child. Look at me. 20 years. Madam, look at me. Look at me. It's okay. 20 years of marriage. If if that woman gave birth to a child by now, that's the other person, right? Wariness. Why am I seeing her? I'm seeing chains around her stomach. You must remove it now. Remove it now. You are a devil of darkness. You hear my voice. Take off that chains now. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's no such thing as barrenness. It's nonsense. When a spirit sits on your stomach, there's no way a child will come. If you like, do whatever. You go to India and come back. You only waste money. But there is a God. Madam, please look at me. I want to pray for you. Are you here with your husband? You came here for program. I'm a student here. And you decided to. Where is your husband? He's in Kafancha. We okay. reside in Kafancha. Okay, look at me, madam. He's a student here. Do you believe God can give you a child? I believe that's why I came. Believe that's why I came. It's okay, it's okay, madam. Look at me. Look at me, madam. Place your hand on your stomach. I want to pray. How many of us believe this woman will come and stand and testify? If you are doubting this, you've not been in Koinonia. Madam, look at me. I want you to shout as loud as you can, I receive. Just shout it. I This God, ba. Let me tell you, that is that is not working in your life does not mean it's not available. I've told you this thing. You have to believe there are dimensions in God. This woman you see will come and stand here with her child. Why is she here, madam? Why are you here? You are married for how many years? Give her the mic. How many years? 
10 years. The anointing is on you. Lay your hands on your stomach. Look at me, madam. Shout, I receive, if you believe. Me. I receive. <laughs> There's something leaving your body now. Let it go. You are a devil. Let her go right now. Something is coming out of your stomach. That's what I'm seeing. That's what has stopped your barrenness. Go and have your child. In the name of Jesus. Go and have your child. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please let me pray. Madam, make sure you people return with your testimonies. Want to pray. Is your husband here? Husband, please come, sir. I want to pray for you. Marriage is between two people, not three people. I look in the spirit and I'm seeing three people. Somebody is a stranger in this equation. Please come, sir. I'm seeing a third person in the spirit refusing to let this marriage work. I'm seeing a third person in the realm of the spirit refusing to let this marriage work. The devil is a liar. We are going to pray. Please hold your hands together. Just in one of your hands. Yes, I want to pray. Please put your hand on your Watch what happens to you. There is a name. Oh. There is a name. There is a name. Lift them. Lift them. Lift them. Lift them. Lift them. There is a name. Let her go. Strangers. Kabataya. What God has joined together. I'm prophesying. That's why I said hold your hands. Anybody whose hand is not held physically should not be in this equation. Therefore I prophesy. Any stranger. Release what you are putting in her stomach now. I'm seeing a snake. That's what I see in the spirit. I'm looking and I'm seeing a serpent. In the name of Jesus. Release her now. Release her now. Kaparatakaya. Marriage was done legally. Therefore you are an illegal occupant. Release her now. Let there be miracle children. Miracle children. I'm seeing a lady in the crowd. You are standing in for your sister. Who has been married for five years. Who is that? I want to pray for that person. Five years. Your sister has been married five years. No child. No child. You are the one. Where is she? What's her name? Deborah. Where is she? She's in Kenya. How many years? Five years. No child. No child. My brother, six years. And you, the devil, wants to give you four years. Or oh, cancel it. Destiny changer. You are the destiny changer. Will you come and change my destiny? My destiny today. Change my destiny. Destiny. destiny today. Destiny changer. You are a destiny changer. Oh, I change my destiny. My destiny hold on. today. Please don't just come out at will. What's it? Hold on, hold on. Coordinate yourself. Who is this? Hold on, hold on. Leave them, leave them. It's okay. Victor, leave her. It's okay. Calm down. How many years? Nine years. Huh? Nine years. Where is she? She's in Adarembauchi. Kigiamata. Is that the same we imbue? Amen. Why are you here, my dear? She has been coming with scourges. For how many years? Yes. Three years. Her husband wants a boy, she wants a girl. Who will win? Did you hear what I said? I said her husband wants a boy, she wants a girl. Who will win? The man is the head of the family. See, this thing is being done by an anointing. It's not, it's not, it's not joke. It's an anointing. Look at me. Listen, every lady, place your hand on your womb. I want to pray for you. Just, just place your hand and leave it there. 
Hold on. Not, not for the brothers. Brothers, you don't have a womb. Just calm down. I know I'm praying for the sisters. That's why I'm praying. Because you see, listen. <laughs> Just follow what I'm doing. You will be surprised to see what will happen. The Bible, the Bible does not allow you to test whether you are pregnant first before you marry. Is that true? So there is no way you know. You just marry and then find out. It's a disaster for a man, a family to pay the price, pay dowry and get married and then there's that nonsense. So lay your hands. I want to pray for you. Let's attack it in advance. If you care for the prayer, lay your hands. For some of you, God is saving you years of misery. I'm seeing a number 21. And this is at least 21 people and families involved. Father, visit them now. Visit them now. Visit them now. I'm praying a miracle is happening to your womb. Visit them now. Visit them now. Visit them now. Right now, everything that wants to plant barrenness in your stomach, for every lady here and those watching online, I command it to leave you right now in the name of Jesus. I command it to leave you right now in the name of Jesus. My dear, look at me. Hold that baby. You, Ejimi, please give her that child. Just hold her so she doesn't fall. Just hold that baby. You are holding this child as a prophetic symbolism for your sister, for you when you get married, and for every other person, and for two other people who are in the congregation. This prophecy is connecting them. Where are they, oh God? Where are they, oh God? The anointing of the Spirit will locate them now. Right now, two of them in the congregation for this miracle. For this miracle. For this miracle. Daddy, sir, please let me talk to you. Just give a few minutes. You and the madam close to you. Mommy, please come. You are an usher, but you are praying. Come, let God answer your prayers. This lady is talking to the Lord. What was the issue? It's my sister. You are asking the Lord to do what? Yes, sir. She has put to bed in time, but none of them is alive. Because I'm seeing a spirit as soon as she's giving birth. This is like an antelope. It eats the children. As in, it's the child, sometimes most of the children will grow nine months, you give birth, then they will last for only a few minutes and they will die. Hold my hands. Where is she? Don't, don't cry. Don't cry. Where is she? What's her name? Ladi. Ladi. Ladi will speak to you. Lay your hand on your stomach. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we declare that this, this, this frustration is over. In the name of Jesus Christ. That is, I want to pray for you. Mama, good evening, ma. Just please stand up. Who is the stubborn child that you want God to touch? Lift his picture up. Lift up. Lift up. Lift up. This is your number one prayer. The one you want to marry. Where is the person? The one you want a job for that graduated. Job, job. The one that graduated. The graduate. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Henry. Mama, yes, sir. this is to tell you that God knows your situation. I hear what I'm saying. Yes, sir. This boy needs to be prayed for. So yes. that this boy, so that they will not go and lock him in police station. Yeah? This I don't know who the boy is, but let it stop on, sir. That's what I'm saying, madam. It's okay. You are here for God to visit you. Amen. Amen. Who is Nonso? Nonso. Nonso. I'm hearing the name Nonso. We are going to pray. Nonso. Mama. We are going to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Eh? Very soon. Solomon, he want to marry. He's planning for his wedding, sir. Okay, it's alright. We'll, we'll pray for him. 
in the name of Jesus Christ, Mama, I pray for you. You came here expecting the power of God to touch you. Huh? Yes, sir. Mama, do you want the pain in your body to stop? Yes, sir. You wake yes, up in the Lord. morning and there's severe pain yes, in your Lord. back. Sir, you know about this thing. I know, sir. And the Lord is going to do a great miracle for Mama. Amen. Because, Mama, I'm seeing you. You can't wash for long. Yes, you bend down to wash and your back is pain. Yes, Thank you, Father. In the I name of that. Jesus Christ, the Lord who has seen you is going to do a miracle Amen. for you. I command by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Help, Mama, you, in Father. Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank Please, you, don't. who is this? Huh? No, so, my friend, are you not so? Help the boy, his trouser is removing. Who is that? Who brought him out? Who should help him now? <laughs> Sir, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. What do you do, sir? I'm the proprietor of his school. I'm a pastor. I'm a civil engineer by training. You own a school? Yes, sir. Primary school? No, sir. Primary. No, sir. I'm primary. Yes, sir. You've been afraid to start the secondary school? Seriously, sir. Is that true? I'm afraid. Because what is happening in the primary, up and down, up and down, people are taking their children out of your school. And they are owing money. And they are owing money. And you are trusting God for a miracle. Because you too, you need a lot of money now. As you are standing here like this, you need money. Very correct, sir. And this money is much. Don't collect loan. Don't collect loan. Loan is a way to die. Don't collect loan. Sir, I want to pray for you. One of the things you are going to start seeing as you minister the word is breakthrough. You will start seeing strange breakthroughs. Amen. In the lives of people. Amen. And then we want to pray for your school, sir. Things are going down. What you need is not money. What you need is very qualified teachers who are really willing to teach. Because the people there, they will come today, a few months, they want to leave. And when they, you know, they want, I will have to pray for you. The devil is a liar. Please lift your hands, sir. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the anointing for speed come upon you, sir. Supernatural speed in the name of Jesus Christ. Grace and speed for you. Mama, God bless you. Please, who is this? Please, if we have not called your case, just be patient. We are going to pray for the sick now. Why is Mama here? Mommy, please come. Huh? Your son's name is Nonso. What's your name? Nonso. From where? Madam State. You are a student here? Dark. Dark. Who is Shidi? I'm hearing the name Shidi. 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 Let me pray for the person now. Mama, I'm going to pray for you. Uh, what you need, this one is not, I'm not even getting any word for your son also. What God is saying, I should prophesy to you, is that He's bringing restoration to your life. God is saying, I should tell you. You see that song that I sang at the beginning of the meeting? Yes, we are I'm speaking house, sir. It's finished. That's what God is saying, I should tell you. That is going to bring restoration to your life. Supernatural restoration right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Hold my hands. Honestly, I'm not getting any prophetic word for you. But in the name of Jesus, may God step in and do a miracle for you. Come, come and get something. You need to pray. Huh? You need academic breakthrough. Receive that grace in Jesus' name. Please, why are these people here? Huh? John. You are serving in Kusa. Have you started serving? Yes. In the place where? State Mosque. Let's pray for you. Father, give him favor. As you go, let there be favor in Jesus' name. Amen. You are what? John. John. Yes. From where? Zaria, I said, Father John, but since you have come out, let me pray for you. 
Huh? Lay your hands on your chest. You love God. John, look at me. Please. God can give you a new beginning. You hear what I'm saying? Please, when I make altar call, John, run and join them. Huh? I'm going to pray for you, but that statement you made is not true. Oh God, help John. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because, you see, you have to be serious with God. Oh God, help John. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. She's older than she actually is. Huh? And there is a there is there is a medical condition. This is a feminine thing that I'm seeing that is responsible for this. Um Kinaji, how sir? Yeah? Yes, sir. Okay, Turen Shima, you, you understand English? I'm seeing happy birthday on top of you and I'm seeing 50 years. How old are you? Shakaran Kina. Upon me on 66. 66. 1966. How old is that? 50 This woman is 50, but she's looking like 70. The devil is a liar. Huh? I'm seeing something. It's not something I can say in the open. But you need to be healed. Madam, this thing started happening to you since soon you were about 17 years. Abune Afara Miki. Look at Skinko. Yes. About 17 years this thing started. This is a serious woman issue. This is women talk. Father, we cancel this nonsense. In the name of Jesus Christ, it must live in Jesus' name. Beginning from today, experience the goodness of God in Jesus' name. May the Lord favor you too in Jesus' name. We want to pray for the sick now. Please, this is our miracle service. Bear with us. We have to deal with these things. You see that there are so many there are so many situations. We are praying. Everyone, you can be seated if you can or stand. We are soon going to be done. But I want us to pray. Are we together? Say after me, inside and outside, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please say it like you are serious. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare. I declare. That every closed gate. Standing before my destiny. Under this corporate anointing, swing open now. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Please, we are not just whiling away time. Pray, participate in the prayer. Some of us, that's what is that's what is affecting our lives. Every gate, every gate, every gate, every gate. Over my finances, over every end of my life, be open now. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Prayer point number two I will still prophesy it upon your life. Say in the name of Jesus, I call forth by the power of prayer every helper who will give me access to resources, to opportunities, and to new levels. I call them into my destiny. Lift your voice and pray. This is a powerful prayer. It's a very powerful prayer. Hallelujah. 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 I'd like you to prophesy and say in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. As I enter these ember months, I declare 
that the mystery of divine preservation is upon my life. No death, no accident, no bad news. Lift your voice and cancel bad news. Make sure you are praying. Some of you are just looking. Pray. It's a very serious prayer point. No bad news. I speak upon my life. The mystery of divine exemption. Outside, outside, don't be tired. You're working out your salvation with fear and trembling. Before we pray on the request, I'd like you to pray and say, In the name of Jesus, how about now? Let's be serious. In the name of Jesus, 
September, September. October, October. November. November, December. December. Hear, my Hear my voice. I speak to you. I speak to you. Deliver, to Deliver to my life only blessings, only blessings. No, pain. no pain, no sorrow, no, sorrow. no, regrets. no regrets. Go ahead and prophesy. Release power to your future. Release power to September. You shut your mouth, you shut your destiny. Release power to September. Release power to October. Release power to November. December. No plane crash. No bus crash. No robbery, no terrorism. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. I declare a covering over me and my family members. Wherever they are, the seal of the blood exempts them from strategy. Listen, I shared some months ago, hold on. I shared some months ago a vision that the Lord showed me. I'm not one person who will stand and say I saw this. Sometimes I see these things I just pray. But it was upon my spirit and I said it. Remember I spoke about the month of September. Everything you see us do here is prophetic. As you speak it looks like you are joking. But you are releasing power to your future. He said, declares thou that he might be justified. Hast thou commanded thy morning? You don't sit down and it delivers everything to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Say in the name of Jesus. The seal of the blood is upon my life and my family members. Therefore, every spirit of death and loss and, loss. and, disaster. and disaster must pass over my life and my family. Lift your voice and pray. No, not upon my life. Not upon my loved ones. They are sealed by the mystery of the blood. No accident. No accident. No death. No obituary. No plane crash. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands towards this prayer request and begin to turn your request to testimonies. Go ahead. All those online followers, we are praying. You submitted your requests and we are praying. Every request. Oh God, you have produced testimonies. Shaba katata. To the God that answers prayers. To the God that answers prayers. To the God that answers prayers. Let there be miracles, testimonies, breakthroughs. Turn around impossible situations, oh God. Let the body come back to children. Let the poor return rich. Let the captive be set free. Let sinners come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. Let your prayers be delivered. Let the sick be healed. Let jobless people return to jobs. Building projects completed. Spiritual lives be fired. Pray, pray. I'm going to prophesy upon this request and I want us to agree with a resounding amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we declare, I use this as a point of contact 
Lord, there are so many requests here representing the challenges in people's lives. Some for jobs, some for marriages, some for children, some for breakthroughs, some for study um, scholarships, others for help, others for reconciliation, others for souls, others for financial prosperity and breakthrough, others for restoration, some for deliverance, others for healing. Lord, I pray in the name that is above all names. We have a covenant of answered prayers with you. Therefore, Lord, arise as a mighty man and turn every prayer request to a testimony in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for all those who have sent their requests on Facebook, on Twitter, on any other platform. Lord, in the name of Jesus, give them strange visitations. Strange visitations from tonight. Strange visitations. And Lord, for every request that made it to this altar, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray, answer everyone in the name of Jesus. On every request to a testimony in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our time is gone. I really apologize. Let me prophesy over our lives. Do you know why prophecy is very powerful? Most of the testimonies that you hear, listen. Most of the testimonies that you hear are as a result of these prophetic words. Are we together? There are needs that God may not reveal and time may not permit to be able to extensively deal with. However, prophecy is powerful. It says in Numbers chapter 6 how that the priest will bless them and speak upon their life. There is something about a prophetic word coming upon your life. Those who know this, that is their edge in the spirit, have received it and it has produced dramatic results in their lives. Those who are careless about it like they are about many other things never really get to receive anything. Let me tell you, even if it's an impartation, even if it's a dimension of breakthrough, for as long as you stepped your feet here and for all the thousands following us online, connect, connect. Distance is no barrier in the spirit. It says you have turned my mourning into dancing. And you have turned my sorrow into joy. I prophesy to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Joy like you have never experienced from January till now. Experience it in the name of Jesus. Joy like you have never experienced. Experience it in the name of Jesus. Hear me. I speak to your hands. Whoever is not doing anything here. Because God said be fruitful. I don't care whether it's a job, a business. I don't care whether you're a student, a graduate, a retiree. Whoever is having an idle hand between now and September miracle service. I put something in your hand. I put something in your hand. I put something in your hand. In the name of Jesus. Not something that will mock you. Something that will bring results. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. I put pressure on your destiny helpers. I put pressure on them. May they respond to you. I put pressure on their spirits. May they arise and help you. May they arise and help you. Hallelujah. Any situation in your life that is a recurrent decimal, it comes as though the breakthrough is coming, then the situation repeats itself. I prophesy no more. No more. No more. No more. In the name of Jesus, no more. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Listen. Someone is speaking here like Mary and saying, how shall these things be? Lord, is it true 
that you will turn my life. I stand in the name of Jesus and I pray. A turn around that will surprise you. Receive it in the name of Jesus. A dramatic turn around. A dramatic turn around. Hallelujah. 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 In the last one month of my life, God has brought breakthroughs and things to my life that I have always believed God. But there is something God can do in your life that will make you fear Him. Not just believe Him. I prophesy to someone here. In the name that is above all names. That flight in the spirit that God can take a man and bring acceleration and not just surprise you but even make you fear. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone in business here and it's no stiving. Things are not happening. You turn everywhere. You've done everything you know to do. You need the prophetic. I add that prophetic dimension to your business. I add that prophetic dimension to your business. Every dream that is still on paper, no finances, no grace to bring it out of paper. You have been writing things for donkey years, but the grace to put it at work, I declare between now and next next month's miracle service, bring evidence, bring evidence, bring evidence, bring results, bring results in the name of Jesus. Anyone called jobless in this place, that you have done everything to do, including giving money to people, and they have not brought jobs to you. I don't know how God will do it. But this mountain mover that can shake every mountain, I pray, may he give you not just a job, a miracle job. Miracle job. Hallelujah. Every family here that is stuck in one place, you try to rise, something brings you down. You try to rise, something brings you down. Now I prophesy to you the grace for rising. Receive it in the name of Jesus. The grace for rising. Receive it in the name of Jesus. The grace for Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.